This, 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 this is the most mature audiences only shit you've ever heard. Period. From Boston. From Boston. Broadcasting all over the world. The world. Send the soy boys home. Cause we ain't gonna sugarcoat shit. Drop down, let me give it to you. This, this is, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. <laughs> everybody did monday night rock kill you guys the other night man what the fuck kind of shit is vince mcmahon drinking man i'm gonna fucking flip the fuck out bro fuck this show and it's fucking ass fuck vince mcmahon and his fucking rapist fucking pedo stash that he has f this whole goddamn crowd f raw we're going to go into a lot of stuff tonight. There's a lot of stupid shit. Seth Rollins' is weird, fucking stupid, weird shit that he did in the ring. What a mess of bullshit fuck out of this stupid fucking company. Wait till they find out that the UFC fans will be here long, long after they are, and they'll be long gone. I can't wait till they figure that out. Man, talk. you know what? I defended that shit at WrestleMania slightly. There were people angry WrestleMania night, and I actually went, well, you know, we'll see what happens. This is something, I guess. I'm a little confused. I'm shocked. But okay, let's see what happens. But then what happens is, I guess, Lesnar is now going to attack Cody. Wow. So they hate Cody Rhodes, or somebody hates Cody Rhodes, and I don't care what they say. This is some kind of long-term build for Cody. No, it was already a long-term build for Cody. They lost faith in Cody. Somebody don't like him. That's the fact. You don't let a guy win the Rumble, you know, come back after being injured for 10 months. He tore his pec and all this sort of thing. And you think you need to hold him down even more so the fans can like him even more, maybe? I mean, that's the argument is that, oh, no, they need to really put him up against it for the next time. It'll be better. I mean, I sort of see what you're saying a little bit, but this is just fucking stupid shit, bro. This is so fucking dumb. Like, if you, I don't think... Do you not understand the people are fucking retarded idiots? And they have the attention span of a fucking Ron Jeremy cum shot? Do you realize that? That people don't have a goddamn attention span anymore? And you want to ramp up trying to, trying to make people have longer fucking stories? People want to see the fucking story happen and pay off and be done. They don't need, they can't deal with long term on most things. Now you can deal with Roman Reigns being champion for a few years because Roman did a good job and it makes sense. But when you bring up a guy who has a chance to take over as the new guy or be the champion, you need to pay that off pretty quickly or you lose it in this day and age. I don't understand why the fuck Big Nose doesn't understand that and why pedo stash Vince McMahon doesn't fucking understand that. And I don't understand why this fucking loser, Kevin Patrick, is the fucking commentator for this fucking company. Fuck Kevin Patrick and his fucking asshole. Are you seriously sitting here telling me that I was not, I was not hired be because Kevin Patrick had to become the goddamn announcer? That that fucking Nosferatu fucking NXT had to become it? Where the fuck is Moro Ronaldo, dude? I will take Moro Ronaldo. I will take Mauro Ronaldo a fucking hundred times over at this point. I would rather Mauro Ronaldo, who literally 
gets fucking scared of his own shadow every seven weeks and probably has to go home and hold his head and have some kind of mental fucking goddamn breakdown, okay? I would rather Mauro Ranallo, who chances are is going to have a goddamn mental breakdown and may end himself on the road in a Holiday Inn on a sad Wednesday night. I would rather that than Kevin Patrick's lame, simple, basic general ass there out there calling raw because he's not that good. I'm sorry to tell you. He's not that good. He's good in the back. He's good in the interview stuff. He is not the lead fucking announcer for WWE. I refuse to believe he is. Corey Graves is better, and he's supposed to be the color guy. So how can you have the color guy be a guy who doesn't have the voice, the passion, and the creativity on the mic to be the play-by-play fucking guy? You don't take shit seriously. Triple H, look in my eyes, you pussy. You don't have what it fucking takes to hire a real announcer. Because that's why you didn't hire me. That's what Road Dog said. You didn't hire me because you're a pussy. Because this guy can't get the job done. He'll never be a legendary announcer. Do you know why Michael Cole is a legendary announcer? Because he's been there for like 20-something years. Kevin Patrick would have to be the announcer for 30 years to be like, wow, what a legend Kevin Patrick was. Was he really a legend, or did you just leave him there for 30 years, and so we all we all used to him now, so you miss him when he's gone? You know who's a fucking legend? Jim fucking Ross is a goddamn legend. Vince McMahon on commentary is a goddamn legend. Kevin Patrick, oh, here they come down to the ring. They hit in the ring when he was, like, behind in his commentary by, like, a minute when I made fun of him a couple weeks back. That's the type of embarrassing shit that you have on commentary. And it's so embarrassing that Co- the Corey Graves has to step up and do the commentary most of the times. And he's the one who sounds excited. And even Corey Graves, I don't love. I think I don't buy him all the time either. So you got a 6 or 7 out of 10 Corey Graves and a fucking 4 out of 10 Kevin Patrick. That is not going to sell this shit. Good Lord Almighty, bro. Whatever happened in Lesnar's mind, he just snapped. Lesnar. Jamie, watch out. Well, what do you mean he snapped? He was clear-headed going into this match as the tag team partner. I think this was calculated, but why is it calculated? You think he snapped? I think this was premeditated. He's going to need the LAPD. He might need the damn National Guard at this point. Corey Graves is doing a good job. You hear that? Corey Graves is doing a good job on the mic. Pretty good job. Kevin Patrick is probably not going to do very good. What is going through Lesnar's head right now? A beast untamed, unleashed. Oh, that. Thanks for adding that, you fucking retard idiot. The beast untamed, unleashed. He just says, retard shit! You say, retard shit! Feasting now on the American Nightmare. He just says those type of things that he wrote down somewhere. The beast is unleashing retard like shit, I say. Why would you say something like that? The beast is unleashed. What is? What the fuck are you saying that for? Why are you saying that? The beast is unleashed. Occasionally, life is not fair, but this, this is absolute. LAPD, he might need a damn National Guard. That was fine by Corey. At this point, what is going through Lesnar's head right now? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what's going through Cody, uh, Co- Cody Rhodes' head right now. This is one of the worst weeks ever 
in his career. The build to WrestleMania, everything that happened, and he got screwed. Let's be honest, no one's really talking about it. You know, I heard Michael Cole the other night, and bless Michael Cole, one of the greatest announcers of all time, but he was giving praise to Roman Reigns. And quite honestly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the praise that the Roman Reigns got. And now Cody Rhodes is getting destroyed by his so-called tag team partner. And this was obviously premeditated by Brock Lesnar. Why, though? Why the hell would you? I'm going to be your tag team partner, and now I'm going to snap and beat the hell out of you. We don't know what Brock Lesnar's doing right now. But I'll tell you what Lesnar's doing. He's got steel steps. There's carnage all over the place. And obviously, no one's, no one's able to help Cody Rhodes right now. Like where are all these where are all these commentate the commentary things you could be saying instead of like hey it's a beast on an east right now what the fuck are you talking about bash your head in Kevin Patrick Cody left his heart in the ring last night at WrestleMania there you go Corey there you go Corey see Corey kind of gets it why does Corey get it. and is now just being destroyed by Brock Lesnar. Wait, oh no. No. Oh my God, oh no. The ribs against Cody's gotta be suffering serious damage right now. In the, in the clutches. Kevin Patrick has said not a fucking word. Of the beast incarnate. He sucks. Cody Rhodes is semi-conscious right now. Still hasn't said a word. And, and how does anyone save Cody from the beast? It can't be done. Why is Kevin Patrick not saying a fucking word? Rock has decided that he is finished. What would Jim Ross be saying right now? What would I be saying right now? What would Moro Ronaldo be saying right now? What would Vince McMahon be saying if he was the announcer right now? I know that he'd be saying something. They'd all be saying something. But instead, we have the color commentator talking. And there's no main voice to be heard from Kevin Patrick unless he says... The beast has been unleashed. Fucking retard. Attacking Cody Rhodes. This is... We have no idea. What was his no, motive? No what was does. his motive? No one does, Kevin. Get, get some medical out here. Please, somebody... Kevin Patrick is like the third announcer in, but there's only two announcers. That right there, just the fact, that alone, and I bring this up because just that fact alone that Kevin Patrick is the, com the, the head commentator of Raw. Kevin Patrick is the head commentator of Raw. Just that alone tells me that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. That alone, because a commentator is super important. They, they tell the entire story. They have a massive effect on everything. There's the dono link. I'm sorry. They have a massive effect on everything. They are the, the, the conductor of the show. In my opinion, this is my opinion, man. And I don't care how many comments, Joe's just bitter they won't hire him. You're goddamn Right, I'm bitter they won't hire me because I would fucking tell the story the way it's supposed to be told. This guy either doesn't know what he's doing or they won't let him. So either he doesn't know what he's doing or they won't let him. And based on the fact that they brought in Joe Rogan too for like over a year and he was somewhat similar... And that they had Adnan Verk or whatever that guy's name was before. 
and now they've got Kevin Patrick. The one thing I'll say about Kevin Patrick is at least he's kind of homegrown talent. That's the one thing I'll say. But the guy should be a backup to everybody. He should be a backup commentator. It's like when Lord Alfred Hayes would do commentary, but Lord Alfred Hayes is way better. I remember when I was a kid, Lord Alfred Hayes kind of felt like the third guy. But listening to Lord Alfred Hayes is better than Kevin Patrick on commentary. I mean, bro, they either want to fail or they're happy to fail or they don't care. Why isn't anybody else here? Why isn't Kevin Kelly here? Why isn't anybody? It's not just me. It's not about me. I'm just saying, listen, when it's it's re- I, my my anger about this only comes from this. I am so sorry to keep harping on this, and I know some people are so sick of me doing this, and I apologize to you. I really do. I know it's annoying, and I'm going to try to limit it. I'm not going to do it much more this episode here in this live stream, guys. Um, but I, I just, from I, I dreamed, I dreamed of being a WWE commentator since I was a little kid. And I, I did so many commentaries on shows and video games and in life. Uh, you know what I mean? I went to, pl- I did play by play, you know, in school. I did all this stuff. I was, the, the, the dream was to be the WWE voice. I want to call wrestling on a gigantic stage, and I want the passion that I have to come through and grab the viewers. And I want to tell it in a fun way that helps the story and that helps all the char- characters and the wrestlers and everybody. And quite honestly, when I see this type of lack of effort or talent, it, it infuriates me. Because I am 39 years old almost, and I will never, ever be announcing for anybody anywhere. And it's not about the the angry YouTube videos and the offensiveness. Excalibur calls people the N-word on the indies. Uh, other people have done crazy stuff. I'm not, it's, it's not about that. It's about they want somebody who calls something somewhere else from ESPN or a celebrity to be the announcer or whatever. Never mind Jim Ross or Vince McMahon or people like Mauro Ronaldo whose whole lives revolved around commentary in a sport and their passion is real for the sport, thus creating excitement, thus making us all care about it and want to listen to it. Kevin Kelly, you know, people like that. But instead, you know, we're stuck with people who either don't really have the passion or they, they really just aren't that good at it. It's not their thing. Or it's it's like it's not a good fit for them. It's like they're good, but it's they're not the top of the A-list. When it comes to wrestlers and wrestling, they only seem to want to take the A-list superstars, right? They, so many wrestlers don't make it because they're not quite muscular enough. They don't quite have all of it. They're not the best on the mic, whatever the reason. But with commentary now in WWE, it seems just just stick anybody out there. Just stick anybody out there that works, that like looks like a pretty face or whatever. And that's it. I mean, dude, this is pathetic. And, and, and we've been over this a million times. We could pull up my last 30 Raw reviews, probably last 20. And we could find all the times I picked out Kevin Patrick. And I feel bad because I actually like the guy as, like, he seems like a nice guy. And I like him as a backstage interviewer. Just like Byron Saxton. Byron was not good, really, on commentary. But he was a good backstage guy. Now, they moved him. They seemed to listen to that and moved him. Why do you not understand Kevin Patrick is never going to be this guy? If you have to have Corey Graves screaming over Kevin Patrick... He's never going to be the guy. And, and you know, WWE hired uh, Vic Joseph over me directly. They picked Vic Joseph, probably because he's tall. They hired Nosferatu over me. Now, I think even Vic Joseph isn't good enough, but I think he's better than Kevin Patrick. I would rather have Vic Joseph on Raw than Kevin Patrick. And I don't even really love Kevin uh, Vic Joseph. But at least with Vic Joseph, it's harder to make the argument that he's as bad as this guy. I'm not done yet, too. We're just talking about this part of the show. There's so much else to, go- to get going on. 
okay? With Pedo Stash, Vince McMahon, and everybody else, and Triple Schnoz. Triple H came out and opened the show amazing, and then it all went to shit from there. Why was that the other night? Lesnar's on the war path, but what the hell is the meaning of this? He's got a steel chair again. Cody, the damage has been done. Good job. See, Corey Graves doing a good job. The color commentator, so to speak, is doing the lead commentary and reacting. Enough! Why? Chair shot to the head, Brock. Brock just hit himself in the head with a chair. Nobody there to help him. He's done. Nobody there to help him. Nobody there to help him. Why does Kevin Patrick say this stupid shit? Like, why is he talking like that? Why? The damage has been done. Nobody dare to help him. Nobody dare to help him. This is why he doesn't talk, because he's an idiot. Nobody, nobody dare to help him. Enough. Why? Enough is enough. Damn it. Nobody Nobody's, to is him. nobody going to step in there and help Cody Rhodes do something? And now he's got a steel chair to his throat. Brock Lesnar's choking the damn life out of Cody Rhodes. Oh, my goodness. Is someone going to do something? I don't know what the reason Lesnar did this was, but it's disgusting. Like, nothing, nothing. Just like, no one's going to do anything. What did he say? Go back. Nobody there to help him. <laughs> Nobody dared to help him. There's a bunch of people outside the ring, Kevin. There's a bunch of people there to help him. They just don't want to help him. You fucking idiot. Nobody there to help him. Why did you say that? I just don't get it. I don't understand how this guy is watching. Dude, I would. And here's the thing. I, I, first of all, I'd be coming unglued like, in a way that I don't even know. And if they told me that I'm supposed to dial it back so Corey Graves can talk, I'd tell him to fuck off. I'm, I quit. Or I'd tell Co Corey, fu no, fucking, I'm talking, Corey. I'm going. I'm doing, I'm the fucking lead commentator. I'm going, bro. There ain't no, like, sitting back and, oh, we'll just let it go and we'll see what happens. Bullshit! You raised a piece of shit. They raised a piece of shit. Chief Wahoo, thank you for becoming a six-month member. The donations are on, sir. I don't care if he said nobody there to help him, nobody cared to help him, nobody here, nothing's going to, and no one, no one can save Cody. Whatever. Why do you? It's just weird. It's a weird way to say something. I I'd be saying, why isn't someone helping? And then Corey could have said, you know, because they're scary looking. Whoa! Would you get in there? We plan the spot all day. Whoa! I want you to jam it in. What's up, bro? We got, I, I haven't even got to all the other news. Audio Jungle. 
pay trolls. Fuck off. Per Fightful, several WWE talent are exploring different options if Vince continues to be involved. Seth microphone segment was cut by Vince. Seth argued with officials during commercial. Vince rewrote Raw two hours. Ah, uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, I heard that as well, and that's been part of what we're going to get into tonight as well. We're not even, we've only touched the cusp of it. D. Welsh, thank you so much, brother, for one hundred and one dollars, dude. Wow. Welsh, thank you, my friend. I probably should switch over to my better mic, huh? But uh, we, we haven't even gotten close. All right. Such a such a better sound now. There we go. There we go. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. Oh, shit. d <laughs> thank you. Scissor me, Joe! <laughs> For a split second, I thought Brock was going to join the bloodline. WrestleMania was the show to change the title. SummerSlam is a decent event, but it's not Mania. Yeah, I mean, I just think a lot of people were ready for them to do something different. And, you know, I was even on board that they didn't. I was like, okay, let's see what, you know, Roman will continue to dominate, but they better do something really cool. But I just, I don't know, man, I, you know, Brock Lesnar turning on Cody Rhodes wasn't the something cool that I thought, you know, could have happened. I would have, I mean, I thought they were actually going to maybe put the belt on Cody on Raw instead. But that would have been kind of dumb as well. But it's they really painted themselves into a hole of nothing. And Vince McMahon clearly was was like a fucking idiot, changing shit all night and doing bullshit on people. The the superstar's morale is probably dead right now. Like like you said, people want to leave, people want to quit. Can you imagine the people that came over thinking like, oh, Vince is gone, so I'll I'll come over there, and now they've got this again. I don't know whose fault it is, any of this stuff, but it sucks. It really sucks. And they can think it doesn't suck all they want, but it sucks. I don't care what they say. It's Rocky Three, Joe, because Cody beat Brock and then gets a title shot. I mean, maybe they build him up and then he gets a title shot. But either way, it's just I, I, I thought Raw was stupid. And the other night, last night, I made a video about Raw saying I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna review it. I'm gonna go to bed. I don't feel good, and I didn't feel good last night. Obviously, there's something wrong with me, and we don't know what it is. But I, I didn't see the main event at that point. When I made that video last night, I had not seen the main event yet. I was just going by what I had seen by the 10:30 mark. At 10:30, basically, like, all right, I've had enough going to bed. But then it got, it just got way worse. You got Kevin Patrick, who can't commentate worth a damn. But I will say, Triple H opened up the night beautifully. I thought Triple H is like, hey, don't worry. We're still WWE, even though UFC bought us, or we're merging to UFC. It's really, it's, mer it's a merger type of thing. A partnership merger, um, where both entities will still exist on their own planes. People will be in charge of them under the conglomeracy of whatever this partnership group, uh, just the same way, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dana White kind of runs the UFC still, even though he doesn't own it, you know, Vince McMahon and Triple H will probably run the WWE, uh, despite the fact that they don't 100% fully own it, although they will own a part of this company, it looks like, or whatever this is, which I don't know the full deal details on yet, which I will get to later. Um, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, D. Welsh, thank you so much, man. D. Welsh dropped $101. Uh, that is a top dono, probably. I, I can't imagine. Well, I can't imagine it, actually, because it's happened before. But um, that is a large dono that I don't, that is the top dono for the time being. That may get beaten. I don't I don't think so. But there it is. D. Welsh, thank you so much, man. We got plenty more to get to. Plus, Seth Rollins, his, his, his shit was cut off. He looked fucking pissed in the ring. I don't care what anybody says. He looked upset. You know, he looked annoyed in the ring, and I don't understand what they even were doing with that. But, uh, and that, you know, some people said, well, this happens all the time and stuff like that. Maybe it does, but it just seemed very awkward. Now, does any, if anybody has the video of, of the, of the, of the situation, 
please send it to me because I have not been able to find it again, but I did see it on Twitter and I will, I will potentially find it tonight, but on Twitter, it's like, it's like, uh, I don't know, somebody like a director or somebody comes up to Seth and he's like, oh, this is a different one. This is just people singing to him. Fan of Seth Rollins throwing down his mic before a WWE commercial. I don't I don't know what that was all about, but it was fucking stupid. Um, I'm trying to find it now, but like it was like someone came up and handed Seth Rollins a microphone, and then they said something to him, and he's like, "Oh, okay, all right." And it looked like they had, oh, I found it, I found it. Here it is. Let's take a look at it. Let's let's look at it. Because the nothing happened, so so let's start back at the beginning though. Triple H comes out and he says a bunch of stupid. Uh, well, actually, okay, I keep saying this because I'm angry. Triple H did well, like he did a good man. He actually killed it on the promo. Triple H came out and killed it. I loved Triple H's promo. Like we're not going anywhere. We're the WWE. That was a great speech. Wonderful stuff from Triple H. And then Roman came out and you could feel it. Like yeah, this like this feels like yeah, it could be good. Night after WrestleMania, here we go. Cody shows up, and then all of a sudden Brock is Cody's partner. That's weird. We expected it to be maybe Sami Zayn or somebody like that, but no, it's Brock. Okay, it's fairly interesting now. And, you know, you're 30-something minutes. You're 35 minutes into Raw, and you're thinking Triple H opened with a great promo. Uh, Cody and Roman stuff was good. All right, now let's see what happens next. And then just the the theory stuff with Rey Mysterio. I, I didn't really care about it that much. Bad Bunny gets involved. You're like, okay, they're going to Puerto Rico. That's why they're doing this shit. Fine. Um, you know, the, whatever. The Street Profits are wrestling. The tag team titles, whatever. I didn't care too much about that. You get the backstage stuff with Roman was pretty good. Bobby Lashley has some weird backstage bullshit thing like, oh, I'm here with my guest, Bobby Lashley. And there's the announcer saying the same shit they always say. Please welcome at my at my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Up oh, classic. What incredible energy out there for Seth freaking Rollins. Shut the fuck up. What incredible energy out there for Seth Rollins. But please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Now, Bobby, something like that. I guarantee it. Joining me at this time, my guest, Bobby Lashley. Why do you say it like that? We know he's your fucking guest. I and mean, it's not even a guest, it's an interview. Is this a fucking, is this some kind of fucking show? Are you Jerry Springer? Are you on fucking, a pot on a radio station? Why are you saying that? Please welcome my guest at this time. And they've been doing this for seven, eight years now. All the announcers in the back. And please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Please welcome at this time. They did it three times last night. Did you notice? Three different fucking bitches, uh, bimbos on the announce team. Please welcome now my guest. And notice she said it out of order. She forgot the fucking words. The words are, now please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Do you know what you want to do if you're exciting in wrestling? You don't want to acknowledge the thing that happened before. If you want to be exciting in wrestling, you cut right away to something else that seems exciting. You don't go into this big transition. Fuck the transition. Do you remember Lord Alfred Hayes and those people doing that? No, they were just like, I'm standing alongside Hulk Hogan, where Hulk Hogan, you say that the Macho Man Randy Savage, and you're going to face him at WrestleMania. What do you think, Hulk Hogan? Well, you know something, Mean Gene? You know, Mean Gene didn't go, well, certainly a lot of ovation there for Seth Rollins and a lot of excitement, but please welcome my guest at this time, the Hulkster. Holy, you know, it's like, but maybe, maybe it was better because Gene was good, and this is like a robotic bimbo. But no. Just fucking cut to the interview. Just be like, well, I'm standing here with Bobby Lashley. Bobby, last night you said, or just Bobby, last night you said, not, you don't need to introduce, like, please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby. We can already see it's, he's there with you. Stop fucking doing it. Stop it. Every time. 
Stop it. So stupid. But the best so was Bobby, the best was how she forgot the line and mixed up the words, but got all the words out, but in the wrong order. That was the best part. Uh, please, my, and my guest, uh, please welcome at this time. Like she was all over the place. Just a few days removed. I love it. I love that she was that she got all the words, but what wrong. What incredible energy out there for Seth freaking Rollins. Joining me at this time, my guest, Bobby Lashley. And, and by the way, why are you putting the microphone on him after saying that? You haven't asked him a fucking question. There has not been a question asked. You said, please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley, and then put the microphone in front of his face. What is he supposed to say? If I'm your guest, doesn't that mean you're supposed to ask me questions? Why are you putting the microphone in front of my face after saying that? Please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Why are you doing that? Now, if you said, my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley, has something he wants to say, uh, Bobby, that would make sense. But this doesn't. Sticking the microphone in front of his fucking face right after saying that? What's the question? So, how are you doing? Man, how are you doing? Why'd you put the microphone in his face just to get the how you doing? What kind of retard shit are they running in WWE? Like, what kind of retard shit are they running in WWE? Well, well, <laughs> certainly a lot of excitement in the air for Seth Rollins. And now, please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. Bobby, there's the question. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, my God, exciting. Oh, my God, it's exciting. Not fucking... Well, Seth Rollins certainly is. Da, 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 da. Anyway, please welcome my guest at this time, Bobby Lashley. How you doing? Bobby, I, like, just, no! No! If I worked in this company, I would fuck people up if I worked in this company. Do you want to know how to make people think your product's fucking lame and stupid and cringy and a waste of time and puts people to sleep? It's shit like this that does it. Because not only does this fucking bimbo not have a personality, she has a newscaster personality, but she doesn't have the charisma of mean Gene Okerlund or most ring announcers and backstage announcers. Byron Saxton's better. He's got better charisma. She don't have it. She's got a weather girl or a newscaster situation going on here. So we have somebody who will never be over as a backstage announcer in a presence that I can believe in on the microphone, that I care to hear her scoops and her interviews. I will never care what this fucking robot whore has to say. And it's not it's not her fault because I actually I think she's pretty and nice and I like her kind of but not like that nothing that's gonna make me jump out of my seats like oh I really like their interviews no it's not her fault because they train them like this every other woman announcer and even man announcer sometimes is forced to say this gobbly goop shit and, and they all sound like robots. Just trash. Bobby, just a few days removed from Friday Night SmackDown. Just go with that. Huge ovation for Seth Rollins tonight. I'm standing aside Bobby Lashley. Bobby, last night at WrestleMania, like, that's all you got to do. Just do that. What's all this other hoop de la blah, 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 blah? Where you won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. How are you feeling? It was a huge honor and everything, but um, I got a lot of print up frustration. Had a lot of print up uh, frustration. Go stand in front of that WrestleMania crowd and not compete. So you got you got this lady who's a robot fuckhead, and then you get Bobby Lashley who can't cut a believable promo. I got I got well I got a lot of print up uh, frustration. I don't believe you, Bobby. I don't believe you, Bobby. 
has like burned me up. Can I call you? Uncle? He couldn't even speak for like 15 seconds. Bobby Lashley couldn't even speak for 15 seconds and make me believe him. Battle Royal. How are you feeling? How am I feeling? Yeah, it's a, it's a great accolade. Won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, but honestly, I don't give a damn about that. I'm pissed off because really I should have had a spot on WrestleMania. Instead, um, that match, which should have been on WrestleMania in the first place, which I won, uh, was moved to SmackDown. And second of all, the fact that I wasn't on WrestleMania, like whatever, and then he gets interrupted. But instead he's like, well, duh, 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 duh. Well, it's a huge honor and everything, but... um. Well, it's a huge honor to win the Andre the Giant ba uh, Memorial Battle Royal, but the fact that I was left off of WrestleMania has kind of left me a little pissed off. I got a lot of print-up frustration. I got a lot of print... Well, I got a lot of print-up frustration. Yeah, I really believe you, Sleepy Bobby. Yeah, I really believe you got a lot of print-up frustration, Bobby. Yeah, I really believe it, bro. You know what I believe? That you butt pump in San Francisco for steroids. That's what I believe. You fuckhead. I don't believe shit you're saying. Having to go stand in front of that WrestleMania crowd and not compete has like burned me up. Can I call your uncle, Bobby? Can I call your uncle, Bobby? And then this guy shows up out of nowhere for no real reason and then just says a bunch of stupid shit. No, you can't call me. Hey, 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 hey. Hear me out, hear me out. You're like my uncle. I'm like your nephew. You teach me things. You know what I would have done here? I would have had Bobby be like, I teach you things, huh? Oh, listen, maybe you're right. You know, maybe you could teach me something. Because, you know, I, I've been a little bit down on my luck. i had been hoping to make a lot more money in the WWE by winning some championships here. And it uh, looks like, you know, you're doing pretty well for yourself. I mean, how much of those glasses you're wearing? Uh, they're like $300, mate. Yeah, okay. Wow, yeah. So, like, and then I just pull them off his fucking head and smash him on the ground and step on him. And then I beat the shit out of him. I would have rather that. But instead, this guy just talks shit to Bobby Lashley. I got a lot of print-up frustration. Well, then why didn't you beat the shit out of this guy if you got a lot of print-up frustration? Instead, he doesn't beat the shit out of this guy. This guy's literally sitting here talking shit to you after you're trying to explain how frustrated you are over WrestleMania. Dude, you should have just slugged him from the jump. You know, in fact, maybe I could be your pupil because you taught me how to lose. You can do? Ease up, Tiger. I can't do tonight. School and then this guy's like, I can't do tonight. What the fuck was the point in this? Fuck off. Am I supposed to... Is this going to be a rivalry? I don't even give a shit now. Oh, school's in session or whatever that means. Probably something to do with character that I don't know about. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, ease up. I can't wrestle you right now. Fuck off. But eventually, you'll learn your lesson. And then, yay, 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 yay. That's a whole lot of no's coming your way. This is a whole lot of fucking terrible. This was, this segment, I mean, dude, I basically, I, I, I want to get AIDS and shoot myself in the head with a fucking crossbow. So that's just a big tease of nothing. I have no, I have no care to see those two wrestle. I don't care to see Ali wrestle. I don't care to see Bobby Lashley wrestle. I don't care to see that interviewer girl ever again. I don't care to see that guy with his glasses ever again. And then Charlotte Flair and, and Rhea Ripley did something similar to that in the ring. Like, oh, I'm the champion. You're the champion. But we'll see you later. Oh, well. Okay, cool. It was an excuse to get them out in the ring together, I guess. it's What's the point in that? I don't know. They're not going to wrestle each other, so what's the point in that? What are you trying to build heat between two people that aren't going to wrestle? Between Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley? What? What Are they going to wrestle each other for exhibition or for the titles? Or If they're going to wrestle each other for the titles down the line soon, then fine, I take this back. But if they're not going to wrestle each other for the titles, what the fuck is the point? And there was only one there was only one really surprise of the night. 
and it was uh, it was Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle's back from his uh, suspension. Uh, who knows? Hooking up with seventeen thousand girls, not caring about his his family, smoking weed somewhere, sixty nining this guy on the ground right here. Okay. So now we're two hours and thirty five minutes in raw, and I want to I want to end myself. Charlotte and Trish and Lita it was just stupid. I don't care about this anymore. And it's not their fault. They could be good if they booked this better and they cut better promos. And uh, then that was it. That was basically it. Then we got to Cody and Roman and Brock, and it's going to be a match, which nobody would have cared about anyway. So, you know, in, in you know, all fairness, I mean, Brock Lesnar attacking Cody was probably more interesting than seeing them all wrestle for no reason. So, okay. But again, Cody Rhodes returns. Seems like the guy. Seems like he's going to be the American nightmare hero guy. And then everything's going well, and then he tears his fucking peck right off. You know? And then he's out forever. Then he comes back and wins the Rumble. Then he goes to WrestleMania against Roman. Then he just loses. Then he comes out and gets killed tonight. It's just there's a whole lot of dead then they got Kevin Patrick on commentary, who sucks on commentary. That's the WWE right now. Pedo Stash Vince is back. So that's great. So Vince is back, I guess. It smells like Vince and fucking Bruce Pritchard are running this whole thing. They hate Cody Rhodes. Or they love him, or they hate him, or I don't know. They, this feels like they hate them. It feels like they hate him. D. Welsh dropped a $100 donation. And there's other ones coming in. Make sure you sub if you're brand new. Good to hear from you. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. Ha, <laughs> <Scissor> me, Joe! <laughs> what I was trying to say on Sunday night about the 1,000 days as WWE champion for Roman, he wasn't WWE champion for 1,000 days. He won the WWE title last WrestleMania. Unless they are merging the universal belt line with the double. Yeah, I, I think they are merging it. I think they're counting him as uh, they're merging it, essentially. He's had one of those titles for that long. The other one, not as long, but they're merged together. There's so, yeah, that's what it is. Up in space. Oh, shit. There's something going on up in this place. There's something weird kind of strange kind of happening. Things are kind of happening. What the fuck is happening? Aliens, extraterrestrials. They gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. Ah, ah, I'm not me. Ah, ah, you're not you. La, la, la. Allison Tuckwa. Oh, I'm fucking crazy. Split personality. Scott McKinnon. When the show is going good, Triple H is behind it, but if Vince McMahon is running it, then the show goes downhill. Everyone likes Triple H running it, and as a fan, I do too. Yeah, and you, but you know what, too, Allison? is like, I do like Triple H running it, but there's been some... I haven't really loved Raw recently either that much. You know what I mean? I, I haven't really been happy with Raw at all recently either. There's times where it feels like it's better than from before... And then Vince is gone, but then it feels like Vince is still there, really. And now it really feels this way. Or is it that people just think that because visually he's back, but he's really been there the whole time? I don't think it's that much different, to be honest. But it this did not feel good. The Raw After Mania was terrible. Just like Raw After Mania has been for the last six years or something. Raw After Mania has been sucking for a long time. And this Raw after Mania was not good, but it hasn't been good for a while. But it felt extra, dude, I was extra piss off, pissed off earlier because when I got up this morning, I got up early and I had some coffee and, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. My stomach is hurt, gallbladder, stomach cancer. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't feel good. So last night I was crippled, but today I was able to uh, sit down and have some coffee, which probably shouldn't have been drinking coffee either before work this morning, and I watched a lot of this Raw because I didn't really watch it all last night, and I just became angry with so much of what I heard. So much of it. 
and I just started like ranting to myself. And I, I like wanted to go live this morning because I was ang- I was more angry. If I'd gone live this morning, I would have blown a gasket. You would have seen me. I would have ripped this whole set down probably and smashed it. I would have lost my goddamn mind because I was freaking out this morning. I was in some kind of rare form this morning that you haven't seen in a while. You all have decided to take your harder. Thank you, Allison Tuckwab, for the donation. Allison. To fund what oh, I shit. do, to fund what I believe in, to fund my Derek godly Hans. ass. JCS Army, donate to me. Donate to me. You know you want to acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. What Vince just pulled off should be taught in every advanced level business class. I can sum it up with this is with a basketball analogy. Vince was down by 20 pints with 30 seconds left in the game. (laughs) But when the clock hit zero, he won by 50. (laughs) That is a great point. But when the clock hit zero, he won by 50. That's unbelievable. Vince McMahon is God. You got to give it to him. You got to give it to Vince. He is God. You got to wonder if Trump is about to pull something like that off too. You know? They <laughs> He basically said his buddy was a working relationship when it was his buddy so he could write it off in taxes and he did it like 30 something times. So each time he did it, they're counting as an indictment count or whatever, a charge. So he's got 34 charges or whatever, when it's really just one charge. So Trump's up against it big time. You wonder if he'll do the same thing, because Trump and Vince are so similar, it's weird. But yeah, when Vince McMahon, when Vince McMahon is up against it, he somehow comes out on fire. I love trying to live by that. Look at us. We couldn't go live for all of WrestleMania week. This is my this would have been my biggest week on this channel all year. And I couldn't go live for all week. You'd think, wow, he's fucked. Joe's gotta go live on his backup channel. Ha <laughs> ha. And then twelve hundred dollars comes in. You know what I mean? We had troll people in the chat like, ha, you're gonna lose all your money now. You're not gonna make any money and you suck fucking loser. Ha <laughs> ha And then you guys drop bombs and somehow we gained a shitload of subs on the other channel that came over here and people were dropping bombs on the show despite being on a backup channel that had been long since forgotten. Now, I might not have come out as big as Vince, but we still come out swinging. And that's what everybody should live by no matter what kind of person you are. You should always try to, when the tough, you know, what do they say when the tough gets going, you know, when the going gets tough, tough gets going. That's what you, that's what you do to be a winner. Or to be as close to that winner as you can. The only way you're going to not win is if you give up or you go, oh, we're fucked. We're fucked. Uh, I'm not going to do a stream. We're fucked. I'm not going to do it. We're fucked. No. Fuck off. So, um, yeah, Alexa Bliss had some kind of skin cancer. That's why she's been missing. People At first, people couldn't figure out what it was. And then I guess... Uh, Bray Wyatt has some kind of mental problem because they said injury, but it's not an injury. It's a mental thing. Derek, thank you for the $30. Let's read his donation again. I feel like there's something else to miss. Oh, yeah. When Vince just pulled off uh, and he did the basketball analogy. That was a great analogy, by the way, Derek. That was that was uh, beautifully said and done. Was, oh! Holy shit, fuck! Holy shit, fuck!
jungle. Wow. When the show runs good, Triple H runs it. But if the show runs crappy, Vince McMahon runs it. I wish Vince McMahon would croak over already. He's not Whoa. supposed to have any control. Just Triple Hand Nick from WWE. That's only supposed to have little bit control, not creative. That's Triple Part. You know what, though, Allison? Here's the thing. It seems like, wow. Allison dropping a bomb. Dropping a bomb to push D. Welsh off. Jesus. Holy shit. Allison. What in the world? That's it. I'm leaving Leah. Oh, my God, Allison. What an unbelievable freaking ball! Allison, thank you so much. Holy shit. And you're, you're right, but I don't think they care. And I think that the new company is emboldened Vince McMahon. Scissor me, daddy! Scissor me, daddy! Brock versus Cody kills Cody's push as a heavyweight. In one month, Cody and Dolphin Ziggler will be the new tag team dancing Alpha's Disco Inferno as manager. Well, I think they're trying to use this to build Cody back up, but why? Why did you even knock him off? I don't know. Michael Ferranti, thank you for the donation, man. Um, I just don't get it, man. Brock kills Brock versus Cody kills Cody's push as a heavyweight. Well, I think they're trying to do the opposite, Michael. I mean, they're trying to say like, you know, now Cody's going to face Brock Lesnar and Brock Lesnar and Cody are going to wrestle and probably Cody's going to win, I guess. And then it's like, wow, he defeated Brock Lesnar because maybe they feel now that puts him up even more on, on Roman Reigns level. And, you know, in a fair fight, he can beat Roman Reigns. Maybe that's the th feelings behind it. You know, Triple H was like, you just settle down and enjoy the ride or whatever. And it's like, I don't think Triple H understands what ADD people have. And especially wrestling fans now, they have more ADD now than ever. And I, I listen, I don't like that. I like some long-term booking stuff too. I, you know, I'm not some crazed person that I'm like, ah, yeah. But I don't think Triple H realizes that he that in, in Vince McMahon or whoever is, who's coming up with this shit? I don't even know. I just know it's not good. I don't know. I just know it's not good. I don't like it. This was a stupid Raw after Mania. It, 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 the only thing it had was Triple H and Roman and Brock and Cody. And what they did was kind of dumb. And that's it. That's why people are bashing this Raw. That's why this Raw is getting terrible ratings. Because you didn't give any anybody anything to feel good about, really, either. You know what I mean? So, when when WrestleMania goes well for the faces... Can I explain something? When WrestleMania goes well for the faces... Or for the face in the main match, the big thing... That's when you have the heels go crazy on Raw the next night. When the face gets destroyed at WrestleMania... That's when you have the face do something epic the night after to build himself back up a bit. You don't have him buried again the next night. That's fucking terribly stupid. For instance, when Shawn Michaels and Triple H, Shawn Michaels lost at WrestleMania 14 to Stone Cold Steve Austin, what did Triple H do? The next night on Raw, Triple H was like, well, I won my match, but you know, DX is broken. We're screwed. Did they have DX beaten up in the ring? No. Tonight I form a new DX. One that is more stronger than ever. And you look to your friends. You look to the click. Here comes X-Pac. They cut a promo. We're here to rip ass on the World Wrestling Federation. And it starts tonight. And then they come out with the New Age Outlaws and they beat the shit out of Terry Funk and Mick Foley and they beat the fuck out of them. 
because they lost at Mania. Triple H won, but his buddy lost, and DX is in trouble, so now DX is strong. So you think tonight on on Raw after that shitty ending and everyone feels down because Roman won and Cody didn't win after all that push and all that shit, all the casuals, and then you just have Cody beaten up again by what, Lesnar? Dude, people are just like, man, fuck this shit. So stupid, stupid, stupidy, stupid, stupid face. It was so stupidy, stupid. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on about it. Allison uh, just took over the donation spot from D. Welsh. One hundred and ninety nine dollars. That is the top dono of the stream. She I can't believe that D. Welsh was just knocked off of his one hundred and one donation. I that was crazy. Thank this is crazy. Thank you. You guys fund the shows without you guys. I can't do them. And you guys are very, very, very nice to have dropped that amount of a donation on me tonight. Thank you so much for that. And uh, that being said, we we actually have more donations to get to. And I'm going to be going to Discord in a few. And I've got some other stuff. We're still going to talk about the Seth Rollins thing. Let's go to the Seth Rollins thing right now, actually. Seth Rollins, had they had some kind of change. It, it appeared on the fly for Seth Rollins. He at some point threw the microphone down in the ring. So, you know, you're expecting, what is Seth going to do? And Seth comes out and he does. What does he do? I've got it. Uh, um. Seth freaking Rollins. Well, to find out what Seth would end up doing, let's go back to our backstage announcer, the same woman who interviewed Bobby Lashley in that riveting backstage interview she did just a few minutes ago. What an incredible WrestleMania, and what a night one for my guest at this time, Seth freaking Rollins. Here we go. There it is again. What an incredible WrestleMania, and what an incredible time for my guest at this time, Seth Rollins. And then awkward look away, and then weird zoom in on wrestler as always. The same goddamn way they've been doing it now for like eight years this sucks. Wow. Well, Seth, night one. Well, Seth, see how fucking stupid it is again? She did the same thing she did with Bobby Lashley. Guys, what did she do? That's right. What an incredible. She took the microphone and put it in front of Seth Rollins' face after she introduced him. Why would you do that? Why would you not just go right into questioning him? Why would you go, Oh, I'm going to say things. Please, WrestleMania certainly was amazing. Seth Rollins. Ha ha ha! Well, Seth, why did you ask no question but put the mic in his face? Again, when she put the mic in front of Bobby's face when she didn't ask a question, he said, what's up? When she put the mic in Seth's face, he said, ha, 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 ha. Why are you doing that? Why are you not just going right to the question? Logan Paul with the curb stop. How are you feeling? Ooh, get it, get it. That's how it should have started. That's how it should have fucking started. Well, what a WrestleMania weekend, and I'm standing alongside Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, last night at WrestleMania, you defeated Logan Paul in an unbelievable match. What are your feelings on that? That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Not... What a night of WrestleMania, and now, please welcome my guest at this time, Seth freaking Rollins. 
<laughs> Seth, last night at WrestleMania, what do you see how retarded that is? Do you see whoever is producing this? Fuck your mother. Who whoever is producing this segment, fuck your mother. I don't care if it's Road Dog. I don't care who it is. Fuck your mother. And if you got a problem, DM me on Twitter. You got a problem with me? Come at me on Twitter in my DMs. You let me know it was you. And I swear to fucking God you're wrong. I don't care how long you've been in TV. I don't care how long you've been in the WWE and TV and whatever. I'll never be there because I'm actually good. So at Meta World Online, come at me, bro. My new Twitter handle, at Meta World Online, come at me, fuckhead. Because this is for fucking retard children. And I'm not talking about Seth Rollins' bizarre behavior, Cruella DeVille look. That's fine. I love the Macho Man, and he was fucking bizarre, too. Ooh, yeah. It's fine. But the way you interview people, it's not her fault personally, this interviewer. They tell her to say this because she's now, she's now the 15th person who's said this and done this the exact same way. She's actually cute and nice, and I kind of like her, but she doesn't have the charisma of an announcer that's legendary. Mean Gene Okerlund did. I am feeling good, baby. I am on cloud nine. It's WrestleMania weekend. It's the Raw after Mania. This past Saturday, I hit the stump, heard around the world, and I sent Logan Paul and his little buddy KSI back to the wasteland of social media. <laughs> but, uh... Like, that's fine. But again, the introduction is so cringe and a waste of time. It's a long waste of time, that introduction. It's so it takes you out of it. You do, the, People are like, why are you spending this much time shitting on something so stupid little like this? Because it takes me out of it, and I don't like it. And things that take me out of it ruin the whole thing. Anyway, let's go to the clip of Seth Rollins that we're supposed to get to this whole fucking time. Here it is. Turn the volume down. See? kind of having like an argument with the somebody from the one of the directors or somebody on the crew like ran out to talk to him and he's kind of like what the fuck what and there's other angles of this too where he's like kind of in a bit of an argument or yelling trying to understand him like what is going on here and it's like what is going on what was going on and what's weird is he did the backstage interview you know and then he comes out he runs out there all hyper, like, I'm Seth Rollins, here I come, the place goes crazy. Then we go to a commercial. And during the commercial, that happened. He was talking to somebody, and they were like, here's the microphone. And uh, we come back from commercial, and it's just this. WrestleMania and Boy, they are still serenading Rollins. By the way, have you guys noticed looking in the crowds that there are not really very many kids? Has anybody realized that in AEW especially, but in WWE also, that you're starting to look out into the crowds and you're starting to realize that most of the people in the crowd are between 30 and 60 years old? Is anybody realizing this? And there's like a stray kid once every like 50 people or 100 people. There's like maybe a stray kid running around. Like in this shot. Like, dude, everybody here is like older. And then there's a stray kid right there. Like random kid. Randomly, there's a kid. 
This shit is basically for kids now. But most of the people in the audience, that guy, these people that I'm looking at, how old is this guy in the purple? He's like 30. How old is this guy? He's like 30, if not older. How old is this guy right here? That guy looks like Dustin Rhodes' dick. He's got to be like 40-something. This guy over here, he's got to be like 30. This guy right here might be younger. He might be like 25 or something. I'm not sure. This Hispanic or couple, I think, this girl looks kind of cute. They look like they might be in their 20s, maybe late 20s. This bald-headed guy over here, he's like 30-something. This guy over here, he's like 30 or 40-something. Back here, these people all look like they're older. Dude, these are all people who are like usually 30 years old to 60 years old in the crowd. There's not a bunch of kids or a bunch of young people. It's weathered people. People my age, 39, 38, 33, 30, 45, 48, 50. I looked at the crowd several times last night at Mania, and I was like, Jesus, fuck. This crowd is starting to look old as shit. Dude, the crowd is starting to look old. It's at the point where WWE is going to start, stuff to, uh, start at, oh, Jesus Christ, it's going to start having to fucking, I can't even speak, they're going to have to start hiring young people to sit in the front rows in order to make this shit look like it's cool. Like, I'm telling you, every, like, 1,000 people, there's, like, one kid maybe. You know, like, here's a family. It's hard to fucking find families. Finally, he, this looks like it might be a family with a kid. This kid might be, like... 11 or 12 or something or something there's mom i guess there's dad they're like 40 or 38 this guy over here is like 30 something the crowd's filled with old people or older people where's the young people they ain't there shit bum joe what the hell happened Triple H might be ousted and Mr. Douchebag is all-powerful. I will never watch Raw again. Ooh. Poor Cody, he will never win. Damn. Hollywood guy. I mean, there's a lot of conspiracies, Hollywood guy. And Hollywood guy, thanks for taking $5 and becoming a shit bum. I think there's a lot of people that think it's a conspiracy that they hate Cody. I, I don't think that. I think the see this happens in politics and in the world, right? Everything is so black and white to everybody, and I don't think it's black and white. People are like, they hate Cody. That's what it is. I don't even think that. I don't think they hate Cody, I, because if they did, they wouldn't push him the way they've been pushing him at all. Vince McMahon is the one that was pushing Cody, and then Triple H took over. And then Vince took back over again, and now they're now he's you know he was the main event at WrestleMania. So I don't think it's that. I think it's they don't know. They think they're doing good stuff. That's what I think. I don't think it's they're not pushing him. I think they're pushing him, and they don't know that this sucks. That's what I think. I think they're out of touch, and they think this is good. I don't think that they purposely have a vendetta against Cody, but there are people that make the argument that, yes, Triple H has a vendetta against Cody. And there are many people that think that Triple H is in charge, not Vince, and Vince began pushing Cody and was going to put Cody over. And since Triple H took over, he changed the plans. And he went with the plans, but then in the end, Roman took over. And let's not forget, Roman is a Triple H guy. Roman is a Triple H guy. Roman is a Vince guy. Cody Rhodes is the son of a bitch who left your company to try to kill it by building another company and then sledgehammered your throne at their biggest first pay-per-view. So who do you who are you going to side with in this argument? The Triple H loves Cody and Vince doesn't. Vince is the one who pushed Cody from the beginning who got Cody. Vince McMahon is the one who pushed Cody. And now since Triple H allegedly is the guy in charge, not Vince, it's allegedly Triple H still, that's what they say. 
Now Cody is in this situation. Could it be that Triple H pulled the fat pulled the fucking plug on that idea? Maybe. I think the truth is in the middle, though. I think they're they I think they all want to push Cody, but that they think this is a good idea. That's what I think. But Roman is a Triple H guy. And Roman has always been a Vince guy. And Cody is a Vince guy. I don't know if Cody's a Triple H guy. But I do know that he's the guy who blamed Triple H and broke his throne thrown over an AEW. We don't know. I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you. We don't know how they feel about Cody. We don't know what the reasons for this are. But what I do know is it sucks. That's what I know. Otherwise, you can pretend all you want. I see people saying Vince buried Cody. How do you know? How do you know Vince? It's not Triple H. You don't know. Maybe Vince was the one who would have made Cody win. You don't really know. But what I do know is it seems like he's back. And this Raw sucked ass. I know that. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. The fact that Shane McMahon got a spot to tear his crod and not Bobby Lashley tells you all about WWE. Yeah. Yes, that's a great point. Gerald Armstrong. Uh, Vin, you know, Shane McMahon comes out and just tears his quad, the poor guy. The poor bastard. People don't understand how quickly you can get injured in a wrestling ring if you've been out of action for a while and you step in there and the adrenaline's going. I brought this up a million times, but the fact of the matter is you can train a whole bunch before WrestleMania and try to get in shape and exercise and stretch knowing that you're going to go out there on WrestleMania. But when you hit the ring and you feel the crowd and the adrenaline starts flowing through your body, there's extra that you're putting into the performance um, that that you haven't done in a while. And there's a damn good chance that you can pull, rip, tear, or hurt something because your body, while you've been training hard, it still doesn't reflect and it doesn't, um, it just doesn't uh, recreate what your body acts like when the adrenaline's pumping from the crowd and your muscles all work a little bit harder because you're going that harder and you really can't hit that level in a gym or anywhere else. You really can't. It's weird because your mind is so stimulated and the adrenaline is pumping. You put exertion into your performance that you really didn't necessarily have practice for or prep for until you get out in front of thousands of people. And that's why people get hurt in those type of situations sometimes. Unless they, they get a chance to kind of warm up a little bit in the ring. And I mean, Vince, I mean, Shane rather went right for the fucking let's diving off the ropes and jumping up in the air and all that shit. And so it's it's understandable um, how it happened. I feel bad for Shane, you know, all that to come out there and do that. And then, yeah, Bobby Lashley doesn't get a spot. But you know what? Bobby Lashley can't talk on the mic worth the shit. So do you really want to see Bobby Lashley anymore? Because whatever, whatever, whether it's whether it's Bobby Lashley or them or the creative or whatever, Bobby Lashley sucks in this company. This company cannot get him going. They just can't do it. They keep they do it for a second every time. You feel the people want to cheer for him, and then he cuts a promo that sucks. My guitar just fell over. He cuts a promo that sucks. He has matches that are just blah, and 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 two one step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back. That's what always happens with Bobby Lashley, a guy that was pretty good in Impact Wrestling, and I enjoyed in Impact Wrestling, but when he's in WWE, it's just a, a bore fest at some point. There's like a second where he's entertaining, and you're like, yeah, Bobby Lashley's pretty good. All right, and then it's just bullshit for a couple of weeks and you go, all right, I'm sick of him. And then he comes back again and then he goes back down again. That's what happens. Whether that's him, I blame the creative because I think there should be some stuff that he could do, but he just, man, he's just worthless on the microphone. New subscriber. You fuck! 
Marty Mark. Hey, Arch Knight, man. Thank you for subbing to the channel. Appreciate that, dude. Let's go to the donations and see what you guys have to say. I mean, thank you guys for all the uh, donations and support, man. I love Howard Finkel. You're damn right. AJ hey, Bullfrog Styles, is know. a yeah. moron. I think AJ's <laughs> injured. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe! <laughs> Hello, Joe. How has it been? Hello. I was at NXT tonight, and they killed it. Way better than Raw. Also, the crowd chanted Fire Vince in the open of the show. Oh, my God. They chanted Fire Vince. And see, whether it's Vince's fault or not, the show sucking, he's going to get blamed for it. You know, he, he's going to get blamed for it because he's now the face. I'm going to leave this Again. case right here. You know? I'm gonna leave this briefcase. Red right Jester, here. thank you, Red Jester. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. Thanks, case man. Right here. For the dono. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. The donation. Right here. Uh, 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 I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, run. Oh, you better run. run. You fat bitch. You better run that run, ass run, off, they are. Run, you, you better bitch. run that ass. Run, run that ass. Run, oh my god, it's a bomb. And then Peggy said, I'm gonna leave this right here. Oh, wait a minute. What the? Oh. I'm a terrorist. Run, you fat bitch. I thought Vince McMahon had less power and Nick and whose daughter and whoever in a UFC had more power. Vince can't really do anything. You only have less power now, company. He owns 37% of the company, so Vince is still the majority owner. Having Vince step down and leave was a charade, a charade. It was subterfuge. It was it was a con. Vince McMahon owns 37% of the WWE still. So, no, he not he, not only is he in charge, he created a deal with with UFC. You know what I mean? He's so in charge that that's what he did. So, Vince is very much in charge. He can do whatever he wants to do. And also Endeavor and UFC, the people that are now merged and partnered with WWE, they want Vince McMahon in charge. It's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. And he's still the majority holder. So, that's crazy. What up, chat? Guys, if you like this stream tonight and you can, you know, you one thing you can do is click the like button and get, we can get to 200 likes if you guys would like to get to 200 likes. I would like to get to 200 likes. Um, Thank you guys so much for these donations, bro. This has been crazy. We will Q&A this all night long if we keep it up. Um, Allison Tuckwa, top dono at 199 knocking off D. Welsh's $101. Um, thank you to Allison. Let's let's drop a couple more here before I go to the Discord. Shit bum. So Brock versus Cody at SummerSlam or Backlash? I don't. You know I don't know why. I would. I don't know why you'd be booking Brock and Cody that far out. I would think it's got to be at Backlash. But what's the Backlash? You know, with Roman, I don't get it. But it's got to be. I thought it was going to be Cody, Sammy, and Kevin against the Bloodline. That's what I thought. Cody, Sammy, Kevin against the Bloodline. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen at Backlash. It was going to be like a three-on-three -three match, or, you know. But okay, they went this way. It's got to be a Backlash. Otherwise, if it's Brock and Cody at SummerSlam, who gives a fuck? I would have expected this to get Cody out of the way if they were going to bring in The Rock, but this just, I don't get it. Brock is here to just build up Cody again, I guess, but still, why? And this is this is what this is. 
the only difference is they should have had, I don't know, th- this is clearly being done because they wanted to keep Roman as the champion, but they they have this awesome Cody Rhodes, and if he loses, even if it was by cheating by Roman Reigns, you're knocking him down a peg quite a, quite a bit. And so now you've got to help him recover. Well, what's better than, well, Cody can beat Brock Lesnar. That's huge to beat Brock Lesnar, and Roman has beaten Brock Lesnar, so Cody can beat Brock. That means he can beat Roman. So that gives him all this credibility. I understand what they're doing. I get the point of it. You got to go somewhere. I just think doing it here tonight was the show was not good. And I I just don't really care at this point about that. What up, Pat Thompson? What up, Mysterious Black? We got Luke Rojas is ready to go, man. I can't wait to talk to Luke in a minute. Um, I've been waiting to talk to Luke because Luke wasn't on the WrestleMania show last night. So there's... Uh, there's, I can't wait to see what Luke is saying. Shit bum. What's your opinion of the women's division? I feel like it's regressed. There's no storylines. Only gold thing is Rhea Ripley. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like Rhea Ripley. I agree, especially after having that great match. And then she comes out and looks at Bianca Belair for no reason. Let's stare at AG Graphics or A Graphics 22. Thank you for the $5. And becoming a $5 shit bum. You guys can become shit bums too if you donate $5. Who doesn't want to become a shit bum? When you become a shit bum, you piss off all the troll bags and they get so mad that they end their families in a campfire fucking shooting. Uh, thank you very much for the $5, A Graphics 22. Um,. Keith Blanchett, what's up, Keith? How you been? Long time OG. I'm going to bring people in slowly. We're going to glide into it nice and easy. Nice and soft and smooth and easy. That's what we're going to do. We're going to mute everybody, and we're going to bring people in one at a time. But I'll start with Luke. As soon as Luke is ready, I will go to Luke. I'm ready. Oh, he's ready. Luke, you missed night two on my stream. What'd you think? Yes. Um, I'm not happy with the ending. I think Cody should have won. Didn't like the fact that Solo, he interferes like five times. He gets ejected, and then he just comes back, back at the end, which is just like he couldn't have thought of anything a little bit more creative. Um, I didn't, uh, I know you brought this up. I didn't like Michael Cole acknowledging Roman after he cheated for like the 50th time. It doesn't yeah. make any fucking, fucking, it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. I also found raw to be kind of man last night. I didn't think it was terrible. I thought I liked the first opening of like the first 30 minutes of it. I enjoyed um, it's definitely not the worst Raw after Mania of all time, like a lot of people are saying. I don't know saying, why people are, Let me tell you something. I don't know why people are saying that. I, does anybody remember the last three years of Raw after Mania? The last five years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, dude, like, I think the last five years of Raw after Mania, most of them have been like two out of tens, like like so unbelievably yeah, least, trash. This, I, this at least was, I could still watch this, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I thought this was... I mean, I'm. I would give it. I'm angry at it, and so I'd give it like a five. But it was more. It was better than several other years recently. Yeah, and also, the thing with the Brock thing. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> is that. <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry. Anyway, the thing with the Brock thing. Yeah, that makes fucking sense, Luke. Is that I'm not. I'm not exactly angry about it where it's like oh fucking cody's buried because i don't think that's the case because then they wouldn't have had a main event wrestlemania um but i do feel like i understand where people are coming from where it's like okay cody just lost we were just building up to we were all excited for cody to finally win he doesn't win okay i can maybe they're building to something and then it's like, oh, well, Cody will eventually get a rematch. 
but right now he's going to be doing shit with Brock, and it feels like it just feels like filler, you know. And I'm excited to see what they do. I'm sure it's it's going to be a great match, but if Brock wins, that's when I'll be outraged. But for right now, I'm just like, okay, I'll see what they do. Have I, I Cody win, then win. He, that de- builds them. It's but yeah, if Brock. It, w- it's de- no, it's definitely to make Cody win to get his like win and to keep him. Going. Yeah, I won't be as outraged. It, trust me, if Brock somehow does win, then I will be as outraged as everybody is right now. But there's people who I was like shocked to see, like so like completely outraged, saying that this is the worst Raw of all time. Uh, solo monster, you look like a fucking retard. I'm sorry, you're supposed to be a journalist. Have you not watched five years of Raw after me? Is they're no, all terrible. He's the, this every, is the worst dude, one. Everyone's saying that you, too. They're retarded. You're, you sound like a fucking mark if you think Cody is buried. Cody's buried it's because Vince hates him. Like, you, you fucking, you just don't watch. You just, like, I'm convinced people don't watch and that they just say buzzwords that they heard from JD so that they could fit in. You know what it is, is people are bored and none of this really hits the spot. So when it's not, they're just, a lot of people are looking to complain, but I, I, I but I'm complaining. Because it's not, it's no, not I, making me feel I good don't either. Agree, I don't agree with, trust me, I don't agree with a lot of your stuff. Like, you know, when you say wrestling is dead and this and that, when in reality, wrestling doesn't feel like it's dead. In you fact, know it feels like it's more, I think it feels like it's a little bit more relevant than it has been in a few years. I think it's dead to people who are like over 35. But then maybe not because well, they're, they're the only ones in the they're crowd. they're going to be dead soon. But maybe not, though. They're the only <laughs> ones in the crowd. Um, I mean, you still have, I mean, I don't know, WrestleMania, I heard like a hundred fucking kids screaming for Cody. I heard this one kid in particular, every time Roman had Cody in like a hold, he was like, Get out! <laughs> that was a hooker. So I think- that was an LA hooker. That wasn't a kid. Oh shit. You can't even tell anymore. Why did Vince dye his eyebrows, hair and mustache all black? Uh, I think he just was going i think he was trying to look young (laughs) he's trying to he's trying to stay youthful you know this ain't this just i don't contrast his face so much like potato head he looks hilarious (laughs) he looks like charlie chaplin i I just can't get over vince's yeah he looks like yeah you know he looks like vincent price i said this the other night he looks exactly like looks like a game show host um yeah, he looks like he should be a game show host. Yeah, and then um for the rest of Mania cuz I never really got to talk to talk to you about it. Um the Hell in a Cell match was just like so weird, you know. You can't really do much about it cuz Balor got injured, but I brought this up to Rastafa cuz me and him talked in the Discord last night. Th- that weird fucking platform that they had in the cell that they randomly like if you noticed, they haphazardly like put a fucking camera on top of it to to like explain why it's there as if it wasn't just there for fucking Balor to jump on. So if you look back, there's just like a camera that's like shoved all the way to the side of the platform and it doesn't look like it fits at all. And I didn't even notice it was there until just randomly he jumps up to it. I'm like, why <laughs> the fuck would there be a platform? Oh, I guess because of that retarded looking camera. Yeah, for and then no it, real it cuts to the camera angle, and it's a camera angle that they've never used ever. <laughs> <laughs> and it was—it looked like complete shit. <laughs> watch Vin, watch what Spina looking like complete shit. Look at this. And Vince McMahon have ever done. Yeah. Combining forces like this is there's nothing like this. There's never been anything like this. People have been talking about this for a long time. There were this, a lot of other suitors. They sure here. will. You know, but Ari really the synergies. Everyone was, was very interested in us, and, and I appreciate that. But the synergies that Ari brings, totally different than everyone else. That said, many doubted we would ever see this day, that you would ever be willing to sell a controlling stake in right. your company. Right. You are the WWE, right. and the WWE is you. So why? Uh, it's, it, it's the right time. It's the right time to do the right thing. And it's the next evolution of WWE. I could probably do what Ari is right now with UFC. It'd take me 10 years, you know. By the time I would grab those 10 years, you'd be 10 years ahead again. So it's like, it makes all the sense in the world for all these synergies that we have. 
you know, to extract all of the value we can out of the marketplace. The deal values UFC, you mentioned some numbers, $12 billion and WWE at $9.3 billion. That's a big number. Well, here's the WWE's market cap is six and a half. Here's what I would say to you. Exactly why we did this, because I think we weren't getting the pure value. I don't think the WWE was no, getting we the pure value. Combined, it's, uh, it's rarefied air, the two of us. And I think the analysts will be able to do it. It's good for the shareholders of WWE and for the shareholders of, of Endeavor. And then when you look back, I don't Wait believe a second. that the Endeavor shareholders were yeah. getting pure play for the rest. Can you pause that for a second? Yeah. So they value the UFC at 11 million, and they v value the WWE at about 9 million. So 9-11. Oh, my God. That's... You're right. Confirmed. Conspiracy. Wow. Cody... Cody, not the guy, question mark. <laughs> That's the next wrestling wow. hub video. Oh, my God, bro. This is a conspiracy. WWE, UFC, 9-11. <laughs> so I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, wait, I want to just bring this up to somebody. Yeah. Somebody called me a shill, and then somebody said that they teased Roman versus Brock again. No, they didn't. What happened was is that Roman asked Heyman why would Brock be here. They were making it seem like Brock wanted to face Roman, but he wasn't. He went after Cody. It was a... Like, are you fucking... Like, do anybody actually watch the shows, or did but they just say they did... It makes no sense. They literally this like as far as writing stuff. Did Cody eliminate Brock from the Royal Rumble? Who eliminated? No. What? Okay. No. I think it it will make sense, make sense because it will make sense. I, I listen. It's gonna be this. Brock thinks. Okay, I was in a match with almost at WrestleMania. That was my biggest match. And everybody sees me as this nice, happy-go-lucky farmer guy who's teaming with the baby face, his, his motives will be, I want to be that tough, ruthless killer. That's why I couldn't beat Roman in the past because I was too busy being this fucking happy ha farmer guy. And so I had to go after you because, you know, you're the biggest baby face or something like that. So I think it still can make sense. Uh, people who saying it's not making any sense right now it, it, are literally just because that's the whole point is that he was his turn was supposed to be shocking. But like right. we don't know they why didn't give he did. you the, We don't know exactly why, but we can have we have ideas of why. Like he was his biggest match on at WrestleMania was against um a fucking giant retard <laughs> while Rome while Cody was in the main event. <laughs> did you hear a few days ago when I was talking to Rostafa when I was like, I kind of feel bad for making fun of almost because you know that, that this guy is all like wrestling means so much to my family and my, my tribe. We, we used to watch wrestling and it meant so much to me. And then just like, and then like him talking about how like him returning to his home country, like wrestling meant so much to the world of my people. And then all of a sudden you see in like the comments, Fucking almost sucks. Hope he dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. Poor almost. Poor almost. Wrestling. 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 Well, at least he can speak better than great Kali, so that's good. Hey, let's bring uh, Rostov on here. Let's bring in Rostov since I... Uh, we'll bring Rostov in. Don't, don't disappear for a month, please. No, I we I we just... miss you. Um... Oh, oh no, at the bar. Go What's up, yeah, Rostafa? Yeah, out of the bar now. What's up? What's going on, y'all? What's up, hey, Daddy? Rostafa. Hey, Rostafa. Uh, 
apparently, according to Jay Menace, me and you are liars and, uh, you know, all this shit. And then he really? now that then he backtracked like 15 times because he comes at he comes at me and Rostafa and says that we're like that we were lying or that we're full of shit and we backtrack on it. And so we try to ask him why. And then we had a conversation with him and then he just started yelling at us and saying how we're fake. And then when I got mad at him, Jay Menace then starts acting like a little bitch and then starts going, oh, well, I just want to have a conversation. So why don't you hit me up on IG so we don't got to talk about this in front of everybody? And then he starts saying that he would pull up on me. So fuck you, Jay Menace, you fake fuck. That's what you are. And you fucking don't make any I'm, sense. I'm still and nobody... confused. I'm, I, I'm like still confused about everything that was going on. I'm not sure if, if he was mad at the fact that Cody lost or the fact that he was just like not coordinating like the, the, the similarity between Cody and his character in, between AEW and WWE, which is what he was trying to get at and compared to why he lost. It, it made no sense. No, and then he – no, and, and then when, when you were gone, when you were gone – when you were gone, he was talking about like, well, you just said that you didn't, if Cody, not the guy, then who the guy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Cody is still the one who's in line to win. All I said was that if Cody loses, if Cody isn't the guy they're planning to take the titles off of Roman, then who? And then he's trying to like catch me in some exposing shit. And he does this every fucking right. time where he calls up and I he wants to this. expose people. And he acts like a pseudo intellectual that he knows about what he's talking about. But he fucking comes off like an idiot. He just comes off like a blabbering idiot. Sorry. I said this. I said this a few. We and I'm not trying to bear in anybody, but I just said this a few weeks ago. Damn. If for whatever reason, if Cody went over, good. You know, another chapter or a different kind of chapter continues. But then, if Cody didn't win, it's like, okay, is Cody considered the guy? But then I also told you this, and in, in, in right before you know we got on live. That if Cody were to be the guy and the fact that he had, you know, again, we talked about Rocky and how Rocky didn't win the first fight, but he won the second fight, right? He had to go through all of that in order to have his own. And then remind you that remember that, you remember that hard times promo that Dusty made years ago? Well, again, this is Cody's hard times period. He literally got robbed of his title win okay that's just continuing to heal them and adding more steam on the road because remember there's a lot of people even though that like you know again you know at this point because at one point people didn't could not stand roman for the, all the wrong reasons because he was stuffed down our throats like cena right but then all yeah, of a perhaps sudden, perhaps oh, sorry to cut you off but perhaps that's their yeah. paranoia is if they have cody win at mania i don't agree with it but perhaps that's what their mindset is, is if he wins at Mania, people are going to turn on him like they turned on Roman. So let's right, really right, give... because it was, it was what happened in AEW. And I absolutely get that. But the, the funny thing is, though, and I'm and this is what I'm trying to get at, is that when Roman came out, the fact that, oh, yeah, my leukemia just came back and it's strong. And all of a sudden he became a straight baby face right after that. But then as soon as that was over with, he associates with Paul Heyman and everything went up from there in terms of loving to hate him instead of just hating him for the sake of not wanting him on our TV. And guess what? The people got what they wanted. But then all of a sudden now they're rejecting it just because uh, Roman's been champ for so long. And I've been just trying to say, look. Back in the day, they did the same thing. And then, of course, when Brock came back, right, and he won the belt, and he was only there part-time, people were complaining. But at the same time, that's also what they did back in the day. So what happened yesteryear apparently is working, whether or well, not the fan agrees. Because, again, we're not conditioned like we, you know, like there's many fans that are not conditioned like they were three decades ago. And I absolutely get that. But are you still watching? Yeah, you're still watching. So yeah, you know, you don't, listen. You know. I don't. I don't necessarily agree. We're we're like with that in the sense that fans will watch. Yeah, like fans will watch regardless. But that's really only the hardcore fans, and they have lost lots of fans. If you look at the viewership, yeah. but I do think they are gaining more fans back since the, since the you know the bloodline storyline's been picking up a lot. Um, you know, Logan Paul has been bringing a lot of attention to the WWE more than any celebrity Bad has. Bunny, Bad Bunny, Pat McAfee. I mean, all these uh, guys. Bad, have... Bad Bunny's different. Bad Bunny, I made a video about that where Bad Bunny, people would only tune in for his segments. 
and you know it'd be like one shitty wrestling match nobody give a fuck about but with logan paul he's like a legitimate wrestler so he would like i don't know i feel like people would be like oh shit he's going against what the wwe champion uh, what's that guy he looks like the he looks like the fucking uh he looks like aquaman oh he's the rock's cousin yeah, yeah. yeah so they so yeah. with logan at least you got people who actually like wouldn't watch are watching and then he's put in storylines that are investing and not a shitty fucking bad bunny storyline from WrestleMania 37, which was atrocious and terrible. And it, it was a good, it was an okay match, but I mean, that was just a horrible. I, actually, no, I, 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 I respectfully disagree. I thought bad bunny did a hell of a job, especially with oh, the yeah, people that he was bad in the bunny, ring with. Am I yeah, bad, here's bunny, a, bad bunny's bad at Logan Paul. I, yeah. For me personally, and for for me personally, oh, up yeah. until the fact, up until the fact that Logan had that match with Roman, I would have said, okay, he had a pretty good match with Miz one on one. He had an okay match in that tag match with the Mysterios, and yeah. But then all of a sudden, he had that match with Roman. I was yeah. blown away how that was his third match, and he mm. did what I he think- did. But again, I was still a bad buddy mark because the thing was, here's a guy that actually took it seriously, went down yeah. to the uh, NXT training center, put the work in while he was on tour, while he was recording, yeah. while he's doing all this stuff, and he took the business seriously. And even Randy Orton, no, no, tr- he- trust me, I I respect Bad Buddy for Bad Buddy, Bad yeah. Bunny for that. I respect him for it. You might, and I bunny. thought his match, I thought his match was impressive. However, that storyline that he was in was complete garbage because it went on for four fucking months. And then um, it also that was the storyline that transitioned into the infamous zombie angle (laughs) from Backlash two years ago. Um, You know, that just that fucking magic storyline that they had uh, where zombies ate the Miz, (laughs) but then he was back alive the next night there's something about sense. the wwe and zombies that they just you know every once in a while they it's almost like like you know the old expression they have to get their stuff in right they did the same thing with sam on ecw which made no sense because that version of wwe ecw sucked anyway and then of course you bring that little thing back but, but that being said i'm just saying for the tense of purpose that if you're truly a cody fan if you really are a cody fan you're going to be hanging on to every single week month leading up to that next match now whether or not he goes over in that next match i don't know because after a couple of conversations that i had with a number of people saying what if they went to next year's wrestlemania now again that's the ambitious and there's a lot of people that are very impatient but remember there are a lot of people that want instant gratification just because we live in the digital age and i'm thinking well to be God. fair it's not instant it's not instant gratification when roman's been champion for two and a half years Instant gratification would have would have been taking the belts off of Roman like months into his title reign, giving it to Kevin Owens when people liked Owens, or oh, no, giving no, no. it to the no, Rollins. That could happen any time, though. That could happen. No, but what I'm but what I'm saying what I'm saying building building to SummerSlam, right? Which I think would make more sense if not more sense, but would make the most sense if you weren't gonna go with the Mania ending, which they didn't. It makes the most sense to have it at at SummerSlam. If Cody loses at SummerSlam, you know, I you can't be upset at the fans for getting frustrated at that shit and saying, well, you know, it's all because of instant gratification. Because it's like, dude, stop fucking annoying us and teasing us with, oh, yeah. Roman's title is going to end. And then it doesn't. And then we got to start from square one. And then, Co- then Roman's got to go against a bunch of filler opponents until eventually he goes against Cody again. And also, I would not be a fan of another year as Roman as champion. I, I understand where you're coming from, Rostafa, but that is that is expecting way too much of your audience to be that completely invested. And also, who knows if they'll be that invested in Cody in a year. And you can say, well, that's well, then maybe Cody isn't the guy. But when you have Cody not win for a year when everybody's been hyping him up to win and then he loses twice to Roman if that's what happens then that's not the fans fault for losing interest in him that's the company's fault for not pulling the trigger when they should have and when all the fans were behind him now we still haven't gotten to that point would it be funny if he didn't uh, would it be funny if they missed the window and he got 
booed eventually over the next year, and then he just never won the title. That would suck. That would that would suck. But there's two things that I want to bring up. Two things. <laughs> Mr. Pico Boulevard. I never said WWE did care. You're just like, what the fuck are you, you know, talking about? Cody couldn't you win the J Menace. Fa- mm. Cody couldn't win the AEW right. title either. Cody's got some kind of thing about winning the big titles. There's two, well, there's that two was things I want to bring up, and just yeah. as comparison. Two things I want to bring up. One is the fact that you remember, obviously, when John Cena lost against The Rock the first year. I mean, of course, it was supposed to be once in a lifetime. Yeah, they did it the next year. Nobody wanted it, but it happened. But again, he got his win back. Daniel Bryan, when he was going for the title contingency, he got it. But then Triple H screwed him, and, and eventually, you know, he lost the title. He goes after it, I think, twice more. And then next thing you know, he's in a rumble. It's really supposed to be Batista and Randy, but everybody rose their voice up and says, no. Give Daniel his spot. And this is at the time the Punk left, where it's supposed to be Punk and Hunter, and that was switched. Then everything else got switched, and the fans got what they wanted. But unfortunately, a month and a half later, Daniel or Brian gets injured, and it put a, you know, you know, a, a dead stop towards, like, all the plans they had. So we got what we wanted, Jeez. but we didn't get everything that we wanted based on that. So I'm just staying right here. Just because you didn't get everything you wanted now doesn't mean you can't get it later. Yes, it is frustrating to understand. Yes, it is frustrating because this guy has been you know champion for three years. But again, Joe, you grew up in the 80s watching this stuff. Yes, Hogan was you know champion for you know four years. And yes, it's been a long time since fans have been conditioned well, I mean, for something like this. Hogan, no different from when Brock was a part-timer. Hogan would lose the belt, you know, within a year, you know, usually. Hogan would win the belt. No, no, but that was later. That was later. I'm talking about his first title reign. What year? His, fir- his first title reign that was... Yes, his first title... Rostava. His first title reign was like four years, but that was a much different time in wrestling, and if you are not acknowledging that that was a different time, then you're not that was you're before. not really being... You're not understanding the fact that wrestling fans back then thought that the construction worker versus the hotel manager was a great no. match. No, all he, right? he's talking but no no no, he's talking about way before that. This is way before construction no, worker. I'm, no, I'm from 1984 to 19 Yes, that's what I'm talking about. During that time, people's favorite move was the leg drop and the arm drag. Things have changed. Wrestling the business has changed and there you can I'm sorry, but having Roman hold the belt longer than Hogan just to beat that record is stupid because nobody cares. The reason about why people, that. Again, I'm not the one. With the, I'm not the one that's booking it. I'm just saying. I'm not no, I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying. That, I'm not saying you are, but I'm just not agreeing with that assessment. The 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 belt was not defended nearly as much. Yeah, it was defended like three times every fucking. And year. also, like the the business wasn't overexposed, so it's like you might see a pay per view. Or whatever, however you saw it, a special event, or a cl- it would be on closed circuit TV or on pay per view eventually. But you might see th- one or two a year. You know what I mean? Like, so you might see one or two or three special events a year, and then you might see on television one or two title defenses. So in the entire year. If you're somebody following the WWF back in 19 whatever 85 86 whatever in in a, an entire year you may see the world title defended possibly 3 to 4 times maybe oh what my the god also fuck including house shows that? Mustafa, every yeah. time you call now there is a car just driving by <laughs> i didn't even know it was a car it's only someone was being shocked to death or something i'm that black i just like drive by who knows um, well, you know no, what? Apparently, according to Menace, he's going to pull up on us. The house shows he, don't come. He said he's going to pull up on me. Did he really face. say that? I don't understand what, what happened there. I don't know. He's just a fucking idiot. He's just an idiot. Like I, he, he really pissed me off tonight because he just he comes off he as, if he's, as if he's your friend. And then all of a sudden he's attacking you. Then you go back at him and then he's like, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. It's because my brothers like what are you talking about? You're just an idiot. <laughs> You were in like, I'm sorry. Has anybody ever heard like a statement from Jay Menace that, that made sense that you didn't have to rewind 50 times to understand what the fuck he's talking about? Because he's back and forth with, with every opinion he has. And then when something happens, he's like, I told you I was right. I told you. 
I've been I've been telling you since day one this shit gonna happen. No, you haven't. Or maybe you did, and I just <laughs> couldn't fucking understand your fucking gobbledygook that you fucking go over every week. Oh, blah, 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 blah. That's you fucking talking, Jay Menace. Don't ever fucking say, oh yeah, yeah, you just yo fucking go come at me one on one. You we can have a we can have a discussion about this in private because you're too busy. Because you're too afraid to be exposed for the fucking retard that you are. So you come after me and try to expose me for some shit, but you're just a fucking idiot. So fuck you, Menace. You call Maybe up again and I'll on, fucking uh, destroy you. Circuit, Maybe you can sell this on closed circuit, Joe. Maybe. I, I can't I'm, believe it. I don't even know what's happening, but it sounds amazing. I don't know. I'm sorry. Either, I'm just, I, I got so fucking I got so fucking It was obviously with that off shit. air while you guys were on hold that No, I yeah, missed. no, we were I was literally I was trying to be cordial with him. I was having a conversation with Mustafa. Menace call gets in and he starts fucking like going on about nothing. It just nothing. Can you just not can you just not for once burden my ears with your stupidity? All right, get back to wrestling. I'm I, sorry. I, I boys. wish you'd recorded it, but uh, yeah. So I anyway, Mustafa brought up house shows, and those don't really count because nobody, not everybody, saw those. So again, it's like it's a whole different well, I mean, world. You know, we saw dirt sheets back then. You still had people reporting to like even like the, you know not just Meltzer, yeah, but, but even they the didn't torch, see it. and they it, were giving little things here and there. Yeah, but there's a most people didn't read those things. They were they were a lot of people were like semi. A lot of rooms did. <laughs> Okay, but the but most people watching were just in the crowd that night, or they were following it a little bit on TV here or there, but but and they they weren't like glued to every little thing, and there wasn't a million matches, so it's not I mean, even I'll give close. You this. I'll give you this. There wasn't social media networks back then. I'll give you that. But You'll give me that? Like, there wasn't that. There's no giving me anything. There was no social media. No, no, no. I, yo, there what is. does that matter? I'm giving you the. What are you giving me? I, I don't even know. I understand that. Who cares whether? What does that have to do with it? Because kayfabe was a little bit more important back then than it is now. Exactly. It's even more the reason why this is ridiculous. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, this belt is on TV all the time. It's defended all the time, and every time the guy wins the same way. But we've seen it so many times. It's not like Hogan when, you know, nobody saw the belt defended. In four if the guy was champion for four years, you would have saw five or six big defenses. You know, if Roman Reigns is, is champion for four to five years, you're gonna see like fucking thirty. And then you're gonna see more because he's on week on TV every week with it. So, yeah, so and also the people eventually about- also Rostafa, you're ignoring the fact that people did turn on Ro- on Hogan. They big time her- t- turned on yeah, him. Yeah, I'm not. It, didn't, not, it happened. Not every, it happened at a point. Good. It happened at a point once wrestling had evolved, like it's been evolving for years, and it has evolved at this point much uh, so many more times since then. That you know, I I understand what you're saying. And, you know, trust me, it's again, it's again, since we have evidence that long reigns can happen, but a fucking it's just not the same. Like nobody wants to constantly see the same ending over and over and over. And when kayfabe was important, maybe people did and didn't mind it. But now kayfabe is broken. Nobody cares about kayfabe. So we all know Oh, they just booked they just booked Roman to win again like that bullshit. Like with now, that stupid bullshit. Question, let me ask this one question. If Dusty was booking the territory, would he have Cody gone over? And give me an honest answer. I don't know. I don't fucking I don't know what what did Dusty do? He's a big fat he fuck. Book, he wasn't just a wrestler. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I didn't I don't that's mean to Dusty, but I I don't I don't really care what dusty would have done but this is the reason uh, yeah. why i'm bringing this up if co if let's say dusty was the booker right so you got a fought i mean they're talking about dusty and the father and the son all that jazz i gotta finish the story if dusty was booking cody with roman chances are most likely roman still would have went over not because not because it was personal or the fans just get too emotionally invested. It's the fact that it's about, as Paul Heyman actually said this right before WrestleMania went off on Sunday, he says, you know, good promo, baby. You know, you're selling that, you know, you, you're telling what the people is on the card and all that, but where's the money? Where's the most you're going to squeeze out of this story that you're telling? And again, if you can extend it, great. You could probably make more money off of this you know, storyline. But yet again, what are you talking it, it, about? It, it, what What's the money? Where would you tell me where the where's the money? 
The money is obviously in the chase, the baby face chasing the heel. That's the money. If you but you can't have that. But Rostafa, you can't have you can't have that be the case for forever. Because what if Cody I, loses at SummerSlam? Would it still I be baby said, face chase? Well, that's no, I understand what Brock. you're saying. That's why he's facing yeah, Brock I'm, now. I'm not. I'm not saying that it should be forever, and it's not going to be forever because you win him in the ring, you lose him in the ring. That's how they work. Unless if Roman gets injured, which I pray to God he doesn't, then you know. I mean, again, it the the payoff is coming, regardless if it's at Mania, whether it's tomorrow, whether if it's six months from now. The it's going to happen regardless of when. We all know that. I don't think that's an arguable point. It's just a matter of yes, shouldn't have happened at Mania. It's arguable. Could it? Yeah, it could. But it didn't. That's the fact. I, okay, but I mean, that's not really an argument. That's just you saying something. I, I understand where you're trying to come from, Rostov, where you and you've told me this off air where you're trying to look at things uh, glass half full. But you also have to acknowledge that if people are frustrated with something, that they're not going to want to hear the response of, well, that's you don't write it, do you? Because then, like, it's like, for instance, people not enjoying the new Star Wars movies, right? And it's like, I just fucking couldn't stand it. You know, they made Ray and Mary Sue or whatever. And then just imagine it's like, well, you, you don't you don't own Star Wars. That's not your decision to make. It's like I never I never said it was. I just right, didn't. But you don't also have I just to didn't agree with it. I just didn't agree with it. Yeah. Yeah. You saw the movie. And if you don't like the movie, you never have to watch it again. Done. But but if you're a fan of Star Wars, you want good shit out of Star Wars. So you should be able right, to complain. So, Otherwise, what the fuck are we doing here? You know? <laughs> so then people, yeah, so people watch The Mandalorian or they watch uh, Obi-Wan or they watch all these different, you know, viewpoints of, you know, the different story arcs. You could do that. You don't necessarily have to watch, you know, episode seven, eight or nine. You know what I mean? There's other options of that universe that you can watch and that you can actually enjoy. But, but the movies are the ones that – now we're getting into Star Wars. But what I'm saying is, Rostafa, when something is not the way they want it to go, and they complain about it, that doesn't automatically mean they want to stop watching. It's just they're annoyed about the storyline. And if the storyline turns out to be shit and they were right about it, are you going to still be like, what, uh, what, um, yeah, da, 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 da. Like, you just, I don't know. You f I feel like you're kind of talking in circles a little. I got to be honest. And I mean, for, I, I, I want to talk me about personally, what's... I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this year more so than I enjoyed the last five to seven years personally. That's just me. I would. Oh I would, no! Yeah, I, it's oh. listen. This has been good. I, I, I'm. That's why I'm not so angry at them prolonging Roman. I'm not that angry about it because every other guy they do this with, they die after a month or three months with their run. Whether it's Kofi, Daniel Bryan, whoever. So that's why I don't have a problem with that. I just don't understand Raw last night. I thought it was a very poor follow up to WrestleMania. It needed to be full of bang, 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 and they didn't really have that. And then you beat up Cody I, again, and I think yeah. they should have waited till next week for Brock to attack Cody. But let's and talk. I, I, I think it's also I think it's also uh, disheartening for so many fans for Cody to come out. He's demanding a rematch, and now it's like we don't really have an answer of when the, when's the next time he's going to be able to face Roman. Now it is SummerSlam, but I again it's oh so like the next few months are just going to be filler because that's what it really is. Because whoever Roman, because it would also be it's shitty if Roman doesn't. SummerSlam. It's a long time till SummerSlam. Yeah, and, and it would also be shitty if Roman, for the next few months, doesn't defend his title. But then when he does defend his title, you know whoever he's facing is probably not going to go over. And so so he's just going to be facing a bunch of filler opponents. And this feud with Brock is essentially just filler so Cody can be, I guess, a more, not relatable babyface, but a more battle-hardened one. What if Sammy, you know? what if Sammy beats Roman on his, like, thousandth day? Well, that falls on a Saturday. Right? I'm, not even <laughs> sure if, I'm not even sure if that's even Saudi, May 27th, but or whatever it was, I think. Yeah, May 27th. But um, whenever they're guess in Saudi, I guess it's going to be close to the thousandth day. Or I, Yeah, because wait a minute. The Saudi uh, show, is, I believe, is in May, right? Because Backlash is, I don't in, know. is this month. Or, Mr. Pico, 
Mr. Pico, before before you get back to your point, Mr. Pico, I never said I hate him winning by cheating every time. I just, after a while, it gets tiresome, especially when the commentators don't treat it like it's a big deal. And then the babyface wrestlers are also being like, well, you were the better competitor here tonight. Like, why? He cheated 450 fucking times. Why is he the better competitor? Yeah. You know what people would say to Ric Flair or say to Triple H when he would cheat? That's a no good son of a bitch who just screwed Shawn Michaels out of the title. Yeah. But now it's, well, now it's, we must oh, acknowledge Roman. Not yeah, I don't get way. why they, they treat it like, wow, he's so good. What do you mean he cheated? Like, he, yeah. like it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. When Roman wins by cheating, it doesn't make fucking sense. But I have a real question: When are we gonna get the um, first trans uh, champion? That's what well, everybody. We kind of already had that years ago with Andy Kaufman, but again, what, what you want to resurface the belt? You want to? I mean, that's what he did. He was the, he, the transgender champion. That's what he. That was Santina. His well, Santino, but he oh wait, Santino, Santino won. Yeah, yeah, but he's but in CNA right now or Impact Wrestling. So. He didn't pay well, I think nails. he just won a. I think he just won a battle royal. <laughs> well, we need to we need to get that representation going. They're doing it with everything else. They've got the Bud Light thing. They got three year olds becoming chopping off three year old dicks. I mean, Rick, like uh, Rick Steiner making fun of Giselle this past Friday. Yeah, I mean, Rick Steiner's getting me. angry. We need to we need to really provoke everybody. And bring out bring out a trans champion who has three kids, and they say that their kids are trans, and they actually cut all their privates off, and say that they've made the proper switch. That somehow miraculously, you somebody three just did that at a protest. It's like I'm just gonna chop my privates off just because I can. Well, they chopped the kids' privates off. I really like when when people, you know, like the Dork Knight, who you know. It's just a fucking shout out to the Dork Knight. He's just a great co-host. Anyway. Uh, he says something like, "Don't forget about Triple H shaking." Oh, okay. You know what? Never mind. You know what? Never mind. I, I think I think he was. Are you trying to? Are you going after Triple H? Or are you trying to say that it's stupid for for getting mad at Roman not being acknowledged as a heel by other commentators? Are you trying to use this as an ex, as an example? Because he's saying that remember when Sting shaked Triple H's hand after he got hit in the head with a sledgehammer? I didn't like that ending either. Or I didn't I like that at I all. I didn't like anything about that match. Honestly. But guess, we, but we guess were what? Raging on that. Guess what? That. that was during. Guess what? That was 2015, which is when this backwards booking of WWE had already been uh, established long ago. I'm talking about classic wrestling in or even attitude era and ruthless aggression era you had commentators that told you when the heel was the heel and when the baby face was the baby face and also i want to acknowledge something too that um cory graves had no problem with with roman cheating and you know with all this dastardly shit that heels do but he was just devastated and outraged when Bad Bunny was attacked by or Damian Priest. Brock Lesnar continuously beat up Cody. Again, I hate the two-face, like, heel-style announcing because even then it's like, I, remember, I don't even remember when Jerry the King Lawler, when he was with JR, like, King would not back down on something. Like, for example, if somebody was getting screwed or somebody was getting their, their butt kicked, Jerry's like, oh, he must have discerned it. Or he must have he still justified in his own mind to remain a heel and try to put something. Paul Hammond even when he was with JR justified it. Do you know what I mean? It's like I hate the idea that you can't differentiate. I mean, if you're gonna have two babyface commentators, one being the color, one being the play by play, okay. But the thing is you have to establish the fact that you're not gonna keep shift shaping just to fit your view just because you think something's cool and something isn't because you can't differentiate what the audience is supposed to think especially if you're a young kid and you don't know who to boo or who to cheer yeah you know what so the dork knight actually brought up a good point the comment i'm sorry to just like kind of no no sell you there but the dork knight did um bring up a good point that the commentators were kind of burying cody at wrestlemania saying that he that he came to hollywood and failed and then tucked his tail between his legs um, they did I that on SmackDown. <laughs> no, 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 but too. well, they did that. Roman did that because Roman's cutting a promo. But the commentators are not supposed to be saying this about the guy <laughs> who is main eventing with the champion. <laughs> Shit, <bomb. laughs> 
<laughs> like, doesn't make any Just sense. When I started to get invested again. Oh. First, Cody loses when he should have won. And second, that whole senile pedo fuck is back in charge. Oh. I honestly hope he fucking dies. Oh. Poor Triple H oh and my. Stephanie. You guys are such this fucking dude doesn't even care about uh. his own family. I don't. I, didn't, Sasha's I shouldn't mouth have bud. said that. I'm sorry, but. That's one. Fucking... Sasha's mouth bud. Thank you for the $5. Yeah, I don't want Vince to die. I love Vince, but it's like, this is not good. You know what Some I mean? people really like I see this shit like I'm convinced Vince hates his fans. Why? And it's like maybe it's because people are wishing him to die so that their wrestling show can be the way they want it to be. Shit. Like, do you bum. understand that this is Jeff wrestling Hardy, and you were Jimmy asking Uso for him to die? PPV called Whiplash. Jeff Hardy and Jimmy Uso headline a pay-per-view called Whiplash. Oh, that'd be cool. Or like or just not sober. That'd be called that'd be a good pay-per-view. Next month, WWE. There, there was a recent photo of him in the sober. airport uh, with a fan, and he looks a little bit uh, on the large side now. He put on a little bit of weight. When the Uso? No, 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 Jeff. Oh, Jeff Hardy. I bet he hasn't Super been wrestling at all. Jack so party. Absolutely. I don't want to pull this out of nowhere, but I seriously believe we're getting another super shutdown, like with Hogan '80s, '90s, and Cena mid '00s, 2010s. Yeah, what? well, Lord Cosmo, thank you. I I, I don't I think, know what he said. Well, he said we're getting another super shove down like Hogan and uh, Cena. Oh, I thought he said showdown. Well, first of all, Roman has been a super shove, shove down for a long time, you know, before even. We plan the spot. Oh, oh my God. How much? How much? I want you to Jay Wells. It in. He took over Allison with two hundred and five dollars. Oh my God, bro! Jungle. People wanted a bomb. Ask and you shall receive. Fuck the rest of you. Ghost from the coast. Drew Bar. Todd Fair. Allison <coughs> Tuckwab. Whoa. D. Wells. Well, I mean, oh nobody can God. top that. Time to sing a song, Joe. No, no, we're not going to do that. But we are going to alert the people of Ukraine. I don't know. Good, don't, good on you. But I mean, you know, there's nobody who could top that. Not even Sith Negan. Not even Sith Negan or Ghost from the Coast. Good top. My nickel. D. Wells just came and uh, basically wiped out Allison Tuck Tuckwab. You know, he took her out. Damn, Audio dude. jungle. Audio Jungle, and I. What's weird is I paid for the rights to that music, and I still use the sample version. Because wait, wait, second, so you paid. Yeah, you paid for the rights. Yeah, I paid for the Fucking, rights. To that. You paid for the rights of a generic song. To get the yeah. just play some bullshit. <laughs> like, like I yeah. had to pay for the rights. <laughs> yeah, when are you gonna well, use that? <laughs> well, because that's so good. Like, I mean, like, are you kidding me? Do we play in the spot all day? I mean, what other song would able to be able to sound like that? You know. I guess you're right. I guess you're I right. Mean, well, you know what? Though it's, it's in your head. I wish you. I wish you would literally. I wish you would just bring back all of your donations, even the ones you don't use anymore, and like release them as like on an album. Because I, I want to listen to that fucking Roman Reigns fist song all the time. Like when I first heard that, I was laughing so hard. Happy which fist? Where he's which, like, which Roman give me Reigns? that Superman punch in my rectum. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah, I have that one somewhere. Hey, Mister Pico, Roman why are you so Reigns. angry at me? You really don't like me, I guess. Mister Pico's Roman mad at you now. I don't know. He's he's been saying some. I think he's just trolling me, but I don't know. He's probably trolling you. Yeah, I know. I know he's trolling me, but uh. Fuck you, Mr. Pico, you fuck face. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I, oh. get, I don't know. Put another pic ugly picture of me as your fucking profile on uh, Discord. 
what, which is just it, every other, every, which is just every picture of yeah, me. <laughs> like what, what other picture do we have? You send me a good picture and I'll put that up. No, the, that? you, you put fine, you put fine photos of me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pico uh, literally looks for like photos where I'm like in the middle of talking. So I'm oh, like, I have good. this dirt face on like, and then I... I'll put it as his profile yeah, for pro- discord. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a sick weirdo. I mean, like, he really is a weird person with pictures. Like, he puts weird photos up everywhere. And he's very much older than everybody, too. Which yeah, is of weird. children. Of children, and he's, yeah. like, 67. He diddles people, probably. I mean, let's hear a little bit more of he Vince real probably quick. Probably smells like shit. Let's hear a little bit more of Pedo Vince. And the, the word on the street was that you wanted $9 billion. This values the WWE at 9.3. Right. So despite everything that's happened... I'm a visionary. Well, you hit the number. <laughs> yes. Deservedly so. But here's what I would also say to you. We paid a fair price, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, We paid a little bit for control premium. Um, With our cost cuts, their new deals coming up, which is... This guy is such a, like, you know... I picture this guy going into, like, a a Porsche, like, dealership, and just, like, being a piece of shit if they don't have the car he wants. He does, he does kind of sound like a piece of shit, but it's also like, what is he? He's saying a fair price as if Vince isn't right there. Like, I know you, I know, I, I agreed. Yeah. <laughs> like, we paid a fair price and um, we just told them that he's acting as if Vince isn't in the same room as him. You know what I mean? It's a little well, weird. It is, it is a little strange. Right now, um, and um, our cost savings. That we think we can extract from the business right now and grow the business with all of our levers, whether it be international sales, domestic, sponsorship, gambling, all the things that we do. Um, I think it's right, right. I would also say to you is when I bought IMG, everybody said I overpaid. It was actually one of the cheapest deals in sports. For sure, when I bought the UFC, everybody was like at 4.2 billion. They were like crazy. We've tripled uh, the EBITDA in that period of time. And now with this, this is going to be. UFC 2.0, um, as it relates to all the things in the flywheel that we can bring. Um, what does that and, mean? And we have unbelievably attractive economics. I don't know, really. I, I, I just know that Does that they, mean it's going to be a market rebrand? Or not a market rebrand. You know what I mean? Just like they're going to change the logo or something? No, I, don't know. I just think hey, he means you, like we're Can you change those belts back to the way they used to look? No, I think he means really? like this is like when I bought the UFC. You know, that was our big thing. Da, da, and this is now like the second big thing. Now we've got WWE you know, involved after we got UFC. So he's saying that. I think that's all he's saying, you know, at this point. But there's some of the comments on the merger. There's more. It's interesting, but it still didn't save you the night. D. Welsh, thank you for the $205, man. Got to say it again. That's big. Uh, They're going to do UFC 2.0, and they're going to put rainbow colors everywhere. Yeah. Well, you know, the UFC is one of the places that doesn't really get into the wokey stuff. You know, so uh, you know, I, I'm so sick of hearing woke like from well, both sides. Just stop. It won't stop happening. I, I'm not mad at you, but I'm mad at people who are like, "Oh, I can't even stand this woke shit." Like people coming up to my like my job, you know, and they're like, "Yeah, I can't even stand these liberals now. We can't even say anything without these wokes." I'm like, "What are you talking about? You're, you know, what, you want a fucking you know podcast? You know, nobody why? says anything to you." <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny you know why fucking bomb you don't nobody you're not fucking a comedian you don't have a tv show nobody's gonna cancel you all right so shut the fuck up it's, it's because people are the overcorrecting that's gonna happen you, you have people that are nuts trying to cancel people for nothing and then so now you have people complaining about being canceled for nothing and then overdoing it. So you you know what I mean? Like for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So every every tart ass, you know, thing that people want to ban people for, there's fucking jump people jumping the other way over reacting to stuff. So it's like You sound you, like you're you sounded like for a second that you were like on Star Trek, like for every reaction, Captain, there's a negative reaction in the system. Yeah. <laughs> well that sounds like the Star Trek Nemesis trailer from two thousand two, but let's not mention Star Trek or the fucking chat will flip out again. Um, why do they hate it so much because they like they, they think it? they like a real thing like wrestling even though the ufc fans all think wrestling is for fucking fairy tailors and then 
and everybody and then other people who aren't fans of UFC think uh, UFC fans are gay because mm-hmm. like you just like watching sweaty well, men like rub up against each other. You know what you described? So was, pretty... You described Owen Benjamin when you said people bringing that stuff up and getting angry or whatever. Owen Benjamin basically like kind of got canceled, but then canceled himself. You know, like Owen, <laughs> Owen Benjamin basically said like, oh, this guy in Hollywood had his like kid sex changed at three years old. So at three years old, this guy in Hollywood cut off his kids privates and he was celebrating it. And Owen Benjamin was like, that's fucked up. And that's like child abuse. And most people agreed. Most people really agreed with him, but he got canceled for it. People were like, yo, you know, you can't say that. It's like, you can't say that three year old having its privates cut off is not mutilation. That's no, it's trends. Like nobody thinks that's okay. So then he got can't he got semi canceled for it. But then what Owen Benjamin did was then he doubled down into all the craziness and went nuts. And then he got canceled off of everything. And he like went crazy. He basically just started saying stuff to get to to say f you. I can do well, yeah. Well, it did, I I don't know about that. Maybe no, attention. Yeah, but no, uh, here's the thing. I think I think woke people, at least in this community, get attacked more often and not more than the people who also deserve to get attacked, which are the fucking dumb, you know, fucking stained t-shirt wearing motherfuckers that, that smell like cigarettes. Mm. And they're like, yeah, man, they fucking <laughs> Biden, man. Let me, let me show you this video on Biden while you're trying to work at the register. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a 35 minute video of Biden smelling people. Jesus. Well, Dork Knight's here. We can hear Dork. I don't yeah. think you can hear us though. I think he's about to talk about his wife. He's probably going to talk about that time when he was three years old and somebody touched him. Well, actually, it's funny that you bring that up because when I was three years old, I had something going on with my with my uvula at the time. <laughs> what the fuck? He's frozen now, I think. <laughs> anyway. Frozen. See, it's funny you bring up frozen because when I went to uh, Antarctica one time for vacation, I was completely confused because that's not where I meant to go. Well, let me take it back to wrestling because Kevin Nash's son. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Um, Finn Balor is basically done demon wise. Like we'll never see that demon again because that demon fell off the top turnbuckle in that jokingly stupid situation. And then Finn Balor got hurt and had to be like repaired in the match at Hell in a Cell and then lost. Can you guys, yes. can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. Jesus. Yeah, we can hear you. We can, I, I could hear you the whole time, but it was it was just weird. Uh, you probably Torque had your, Knight, the Corbin Dallas of our existence. All right. I'm muting Mustafa for that. Um, Dork, so what what's did he up? say? I don't know, but I muted him for it. Uh, Dork, what oh, do you Oh, come what, on, Mustafa. What do you think, Dork? What's going on here? With what? You like Raw? You think it's good? You think it's bad? You mad? You happy? You think people are being no, overreacting uh, to Raw? No. Uh, I, I put it in the chat. Maybe you didn't see it. Um, I knew <laughs> before the dirt sheets told me that Vince McMahon took over charge of Raw, I knew because it was fucking trash. It was trash. Night two of WrestleMania. I, I'm sorry. Anybody who watched WrestleMania... Saturday was way better than Sunday. Yes. And and Sunday, it's been confirmed by the dirt sheets, whether you believe them or not, but I believe my lion eyes. Uh, so it wasn't confirmed. So, <laughs> if no, it's no, from it the was, dirt was, sheets, that means it, it wasn't confirmed. Hey, fine. A lot of the all shit know, from dirt sheets are lies. I, I get that. But all I know is Saturday was way better. Sunday was the shits. And the Raw after WrestleMania was even worse. So I should have. I mean, uh, so Sunday I, you still had good matches, though. I mean, it's. You had a really great Intercontinental title match. No, no. You Bianca, can have good, whether Vince McMahon f- fucks up shit or not, you can still have good matches. That that like that's always been a thing. You can still have. I don't good know. Matches. I mean, Vince liked Vince liked Cody, and Cody went over three times when Vince was still here. So, I mean, I don't oh, know I if you think it's, it's that ending of the Cody Rhodes uh, match was such a like what did my I. It was such a WWE way to end it. It was so like boring, cliched, played out. I'm fucking sick of it. There's never going to no. be a better time to crown somebody than then than that night. It's it just won't like be they- a special. It won't be a special. Right. But 
as long as Cody is still the guy that they that is the end game, then I'm not as quite upset with it. You know, I'm not, if I'm Cody not so now sure if he... Cody if Cody loses to Brock, Cody loses to Brock, and he's not in the title picture at SummerSlam, then that's when I'm like, this is fucking bullshit, man. But right, right. now. Right now, yeah, they had him lose the main event, but they still had him main event WrestleMania, which is, who's, you know, uh, a huge ta- deal. Who's talk? I can't tell who's talking. It's talk. Rojas. Who's... He wanted you to be on the oh call like crazy. Now he's just talking over you. Hey, come on the show, so, Dork Knight. I, I'll I, didn't, talk I didn't want him on. The, that was Rostafa who oh. wanted him on oh, the call. Oh, it was Rostafa? All right. All right. Well, All I'm, right. I'm anyway, Rostafa. I got a, I got a two-word response to that, okay? And, and you might be too young. I don't know your age, but two words. You ready? Okay. Lex Luger. Cody Rhodes is this generation's Lex Luger. I don't think he's ever going to get the title. I yeah. think they proved it at WrestleMania. That was really a... did Lex Luger main event though. WrestleMania. He made. He made. You know. He made. He won. He uh, he main evented SummerSlam. Yeah, you know? but SummerSlam main eventing SummerSlam is not as big of a deal as main eventing WrestleMania. Well, then he, they well, would he have had not a, he, had. He, they would have not had Cody win the Rumble, and main event WrestleMania. And now are putting him in a storyline with Brock in order to gain more sympathy if they did not view him as the next champion or at least or at least as a star. Lex Luger, they really they gave up on. And also Lex Luger kind of sucked. So I I hope you're right. But I feel like I hope you're right. And they're giving him the John Cena treatment. But if that's the case, that means we got to wait another fucking year. Till WrestleMania next year before Cody wins. And the whole thing is, is they want, uh, just like with Gunther, that's why on my uh, prediction show, I knew Gunther wasn't going to lose because they want him to break Honky Tonk Man's record. They don't want, they want, uh, they want Roman to break the Hogan record, the Pedro Morales record. He's never going to beat the, uh, what's his name? The Bob the, Backlund? The, no, no. Uh, oh, the, um, the, the, um, not. Uh, Fuck the the main the the, the guy was Bruno fucking, Bruno, San Bruno San Martino. Martino. Thank you. Bru- yeah, the, no one's ever going to break Bruno's record. Yeah, what, but they 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 do want. I think they want Roman to break Hogan's. I, I really do. And that that and and he'll break Hogan if he loses at SummerSlam, which I kind of don't even think he will. But if he loses at SummerSlam, he'll break Hogan's record and Pedro Morales's record. And so, I don't know if he'll be. I don't know if he'll be. I think Hogan's record is like a thousand four hundred something days, and oh, is it? by the t- I think so. But he'll at least, at the very least, he'll beat Pedro's, and he'll be way past a thousand days. Um, yeah. Also, the Hall of Fame couple, because somebody said that in the chat, and I just love that line. The Hall of Fame um, couple. The beast incarnate has been unleashed. <laughs> the, yeah. the beast no, uh, is unleashed. Anyway. When you but, say Hall of Fame couple, I think of Booker T and Charmel, Queen Charmel. Yeah, but apparently, uh, man, you know. what are you talking about my wife for, man? <laughs> five time, five time. No, I love Booker T. I'm the five time rapist. Oh, God. oh no, Booker, don't don't start five that again. Convictions in a row. <laughs> Stop it, Booker. Two Booker. time Hall of Famer, five time world champ, well, I, ICW six time world champ. Booker, stop looking at the audience and with an erection. Stop it. Yeah, I'll Please. fucking I'll look at anybody I want, bitch. I'll look at your <laughs> fucking wife if I want to. Oh my, well, come on. Hey man, I, I, I'll, I'll fucking grind up and down, left <laughs> and right. Oh yeah. Hey man, I love Booker T. Oh, yeah. I, I, I he he can cuck me out. I'd I'd fucking record him fucking my wife. Yeah, well Booker T didn't help me when I got in that fight with Bully Ray. Thanks Booker. He just looked on. Man, I don't know what this big fat fucking white dude responds. <laughs> just imagine Booker just like roasts you, like, man, that big fat fucking white piece of garbage. <laughs> the only one, the only one that kind of moved was uh, Scott Hall. I'll give it. Scott Hall kind of was like putting his hand out and holding on to Bully Ray, like, man, what's going? What are you doing? What is going on? Like, Some of like, these wrestlers fuck? take themselves so. Se- I think you really put it best, and I don't know what video. Oh yeah, it was the video you made on Punk. Where you basically just said, you know what I think? I think wrestlers are just scumbags. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like every wrestler now, I'm just hearing a story about like every wrestler and they all kind of sound like scumbags. Well, or they piss me off in a way. Like um, I was talking with Rostafa about um, 
the whole Moxley situation, and his comments are so fucking annoying and hypocritical. Oh, with Renee like, on her podcast the other day? Yeah, because he's like, I don't even care about this drama. Why is this? It's not news. It's just some guy complaining on the internet. It's like, first of all, you're in the business of wrestling, and you're not concerned about drama. You don't want to be involved with drama. The wrestling is like the most drama-filled business ever. Um, second of all, it is it is news when the company's biggest signee ever is lambasting the fucking company and now is on Twitter uh, calling out its top stars. If you don't understand why that's not news, Moxley, then you're just a fucking idiot. But you know what? Let me call you out. Let me call you out for something real quickly because you just said that you know quite honestly all these wrestlers are just scumbags. But then when Moxley kind of takes the high road on all the bullshit stuff and will only go into drama if it's on the TV screen for the part of the show, you're kind of bashing him for the very thing, opposite no, thing no, you no, just no, bashed no. the because wrestlers. It's a hypocritical thing to say because he goes, oh, I don't even want to be involved in this drama. But it's like you got involved with professional wrestling, which is the most drama-filled shit ever. You obviously do. And also, he's one of these types of guys. That's the shucky ducky quack quack moment of the night. He's <laughs> one of these types of guys day. like um, he's like one of these types of guys like Brian who like say like, oh, man, I don't even want to be a star. Like, I didn't even like, honestly, man, if I could just like wrestle in the bingo halls, I would just do that. And like, then don't go to the WWE. Don't become a wrestling star. Don't become a big star. Just don't. If that's the if that's what you really don't want. You didn't want to be a star. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's just hypocritical shit that I can't stand. And you know what else is funny is if I had done a Raw review the other night, I, I mean, Raw reviews have been so down recently that there's like 180 to 230 people watching me on Raw reviews. Mm -hmm. we, we, we come on a Tuesday night to talk about this stuff after Raw, and we had a consistent like amount of viewers, like 480 viewers tonight, like four, 5,000 clicks it looks like. And it's like, that's crazy because this isn't even raw, but this is how people are mad. Like they're looking around for answers and people upset because they're, they're upset. And I don't even, I, I understand waiting because sometimes we get angry and then in the end we're like, that made sense or that was worth it finally. But it's the meantime that's like, it's like, a TV series that doesn't deliver much on an episode, and then you get to wait to see the next episode, and that doesn't deliver on much, and you become angry at the show, and you stop watching eventually. Yeah, dude, dude, did you hear all the news that came out about yesterday's Raw, about all the last, like, for the first time in eight months, uh, there were, like, about five different uh, uh, last-minute uh, changes made that, that were went out like people like new minutes beforehand. That's why the, I don't know if you noticed the entire first hour of raw was advertised to be commercial free, but it did. It only made it 54 minutes because of all the fucking changes. McMahon was yeah. making. They had to, they had to we, take we, an early we showed video break. of them running out to talk to Seth. And like, what were they talking to him about? He looked upset or, or confused. Yeah. yeah. And then, Hey, hey guys, but guys, man, Bailey's leaving. Oh no, she is. <laughs> you know what's funny though? It's funny that Bailey's leaving. I, I guess the rumor is that she's leaving because of Vince. When Vince was here, she was champion you know, I, for I, a I year. Hope, I when hope she, more when Vince was here, she was champion for three hundred days, for three hundred eighty days. When Triple H was booking her, she was losing every week in a shitty faction called Damage hey. Control. So, hey, man. I don't know. Hey, who <laughs> I don't know who's talking, but just to reply to you, maybe you um, should look at the Discord. I'm I'm looking at the Discord. I can't. Well, who's I, I see... whose name is highlighting is highlighting up when I'm when I'm speaking. Luke Rojas. So so who do you think <laughs> that would be? You're the who do you Dragon think Ball that guy. would be. <laughs> look, man. Clearly, clearly, I'm getting stoned. You don't gotta be mean. Yeah, Here's I understand, me. man. But it's you did this last time, and it. Look at the fucking Discord. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's it's frustrating. I smoke too, and I I know, you know who's what's talking frustrating? on the Discord. If you showed your face, I could see your lips move. Doom okay. Cock. Anyway, <laughs> um, I I, uh, I I don't know, man. I just think that um, I think that more people should leave. Like, if the shit with Bailey's true, I actually think more people... Because, first of all, I don't know, uh, 
I don't know if you saw it, Joe, but I only saw it because of you. There was a picture of Vince with his little pencil mustache. Yeah. And they said, wrong answer, caption this, wrong answers only. And I said, uh, oh, it looks like the sexual predator that he is. Yeah. You know, and, I, and that actually got a few retweets and likes and shit. Because, like, I don't know, man, like, how is this guy Teflon Don in any other, like, he's like the Harvey Weinstein of wrestling, but he's getting away with it. I just don't understand. It just blows I mean, what was, what? What did he say? He he paid or he paid somebody off to have sex with him. I mean, I don't know. Well, if that's think about this. Like, Don, it's Harvey like, Weinstein-ish, but I don't it's know. like Donald don't Trump. Know. You, you can... know, Donald Trump has done a lot of things over the years and kind of gotten away with those things. He's only in trouble now because he's running for president. And so, because you know Vince McMahon, what the fuck? Because Vince Vince McMahon is like a wrestling guy. He's not taken serious by a lot of people. And it's like, although he's popular and, and a well-known guy and, a, and whatever, it's hard to cancel him because he doesn't flow in the circles of places that could be canceled. You know, so yeah, he doesn't even he doesn't even he barely fucking does anything but work. But he's also smart. Uh, he has a he, knows, he has a big fucking mansion that he doesn't even go to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, no, it, it, it's it's just. It's just infuriating to me. The his guy marriage can get away is a, with his marriage is a fucking front too. He probably I he probably hasn't spoken to Linda in like days, if not oh, weeks. He's had, a sexist, he's had a sexist marriage most likely for the better part of twenty years. No, that, but I'm that's what I'm saying is Except that when she Vince, passed out, his whole his whole life is like is basically just like a distraction to him for when he's working. So you think he he's cares that Cole he's canceled? <laughs> he's a Don Colleone of pro wrestling and sports entertainment, if you like. I mean, the fact that he's got so many things working for him, the fact that he was the majority stockholder even during the time of the scandal and remained that, then comes back into power, and yet, which is basically the reason why he, mainly he came back because he wanted to sell the company, and he did. And everything is playing out the way it's supposed to be playing out the way he wanted it to. And whether if you like, I mean, he even said in the interview, which I still find very intriguing, is like, I've made good and bad decisions, both professionally and personally. So, no. you but know, don't, you know, know when, don't you hate it. reading shit? Don't you hate reading shit from people where they're like, I don't even know, like, Vince is clearly a fucking senile idiot. It's like, well, if he's so stupid, why no, does WWE not, no. can continue to make money? <laughs> First of all, he's he's not. I've I've never been one of those people. He's not stupid. No, no, <clears> I'm not talking a, about you. But I've seen he, it a he's lot. He's a he's a he's scary fucking smart. That's how he gets away with all this crazy shit. And it, it it's uh it's quite frankly fucking terrifying. And I I I really terrifying? I wish. I well, yeah, dude, he's a, he's a garbage. In my opinion, anyway. If Why you is it terrifying? Me, What's he gonna do to you? I don't know what he's going to do to me, but I, I wouldn't let him fucking ever meet my daughter, much less spend any time no, alone with her. No, I'm, I'm you know, pretty sure he doesn't want to. You know. uh, uh, <laughs> fuck you. you haven't <laughs> he was seen my clamoring daughter, to meet your daughter, too. He's like, fuck. Why, <laughs> why, why, do we, why do we have to see your daughter? What's going on with her? <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing. Okay. At all. Well, I'm I mean, like, I, I have a... I have a I have an attractive daughter, and I don't want you to fucking. Oh die. my what god! What the fuck? Why? Why would you? Why just are you say talking that? about your daughter being Seriously, attractive? Seriously, of all the things you could have said, you could have said, Dude, "I have a beautiful you know, daughter." I have you know a how many, really no. pretty daughter. <laughs> you know I have many, an attractive daughter. You know, <laughs> no, you know how many motherfuckers I've had to put the fear of God into with this shotgun over here. I haven't even had. I haven't, You're, nobody I fucks my daughter. Well, you should. But me. You should point at you. should point at yourself <laughs> well, right now. Well, first of all. That was kind of gross. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. You literally just said that your daughter is attractive. Like you should. Hey, not my mom be says I'm attractive. No, well, no, subjectively, that's what other people tell me. She's my daughter, so I don't. She's, I mean, like, obviously, like who wouldn't she, want that? She's my cute little. You know. All little right, girl, all but... right. Calm down, <laughs> calm down, Dork. Calm down, brother. Jesus all right, Christ! All right. Don't. I, I gotta wrap her, it up anyway because I gotta go to bed. work at seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Rustava. Um, you on the got, West Coast. Yeah, I know. See, that's the thing. Is here now. It's like one a.m. here, and I woke up at five a.m. But um, not even ten. Yeah, like it's early for Dork. So, <laughs> you know what's funny? It's early for me. 
those fucking po- you know the popcast guys keep being like oh we can't wait to have you on the show and then i text them and then they don't say anything do they blow you off like that too dude look <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> you know, here, let me put it this way. They're not as bad as the salty nerds. Yeah. And and I was and I was like their for the salty nerds first guest star. I've known those dudes for years. So All right. like, so like that's how they are. If I don't Well, they're the ones have, that brought it up. If you if you don't have, and what I don't get about you is you have a lot of followers, so I don't get why. So me, I get. I don't take it personally because I'm like, yeah, I don't have any followers because I'm a guest on everybody's show. I'm like mm. Kato Kalen of YouTube. Yeah. But uh, you, I don't get. You got seventy two thousand subscribers. They got four thousand on one channel, a hundred thousand on another. But well, I, I, it's know. not. They asked me to come on. I didn't even say like I want to come on. They were just like, we got to have you on. So I'm like, okay, when you want me on? They never answer me. I just think it's because they're busy. Because I get like this too. I tell people to come Dude. on, and then I don't get back to. So it's just busy. People I, I, are busy. Th- no, Brian and Shane are great. I've I love people. them. Yeah. I've done. I've done a few, um, so I do graphic design. I, I'm not allowed to say because I was paid. It was a pay to uh, pay for whatever. Um, I've done several designs on their store, but I can't tell you which ones type of thing. Oh, um, but, but you know, they paid me, you know, and they're, they're super cool now, dudes. Now, did they I pay have, you in sex? That's what I've heard about, like, that they pay, they do that sort of, like, favor. You know, it's funny. No, they, they wanted to pay me in money, but I am a, I'm a simple geek, and I, I just yeah. was like, nah, dude, just um, give me, like, you know, and I'm like, oh, you, you, oh, you want to give me 200 bucks here? I want these 10 shirts. You know what I mean? Because they have, they own mixed tees. So you know, like they they have all the. I thought food. you were gonna go for the R-rated comic. But, wait a you minute! Know, you, wait a minute! You know? They own no. mixed tees. Yeah, they are mixed tees. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. on Teespring or whatever, but it was, dude, it was great. Dude, they they uh, Brian and Shane have their they they have a very diversified portfolio, bro. Like they own a lot of shit that you probably have heard of. Mixed tees, just being one of them. Like they're they they've been around a while. They just started doing this YouTube shit, you know, wow. a few years ago. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They, no, yeah. they've been great. It's funny. Um, but yeah, I like them, and uh, we'll definitely clip this. But uh, smoke up, baby, Rostava. What do you got? What do you got, man? I, I know that Rojas had to go, and I think Jesse's here. Is that Jesse? Is he ex- accident Earth? Is that Jesse? Or is it somebody else? Uh, it's probably it's probably him. I mean, as far as you know, everybody was just like crapping on Raw, and it, there were definitely a lot of parts of Raw that I didn't like, but there were some that I did. Um, obviously, you know, the interest was in the old and ending segments, and then Rhea Ripley and Bianca, which allegedly down the road, maybe Saudi, maybe SummerSlam, they're going to do a unification. Um, and again, as far as who goes over, that's a good question. Uh, if you do uh, Rostafa, Rhea, Dork Knight is raising his hand right now. I don't want to be oh, rude. Oh Lord! Yes. Uh, no, no. I, I want to have. I want to have a conversation. It's AJ Adams talking now, right? Oh yeah, he's a psycho. I'm learning. No, no. Uh, I just was making sure. Yeah, this is AJ um, Adams you're talking to right now. So, oh, um, I. So I didn't say <laughs> like. Okay, let me ask you this. So Raw, <clears throat> last the, uh, as far as Raws after WrestleMania go. Would you not say this has been more in line with what we've been getting the last five years versus what we got fairly consistently before that? Okay. Like, like, love it, love like, like, what were the big surprises? What were the big returns? What were the big matches? I mean, you've got the largest Monday Night Raw crowd of the year because you got people from all over the globe there for WrestleMania. They're going to hit the Raw before they head back home. They're supposed to pull out all the stops. This was one of the objectively. Do you not agree? Like, I'm not saying everything was bad. There were a couple things I liked, and I'll admit it. You know, we can discuss that. But I'm just saying, overall, as a Raw after WrestleMania show, this was kind of the shits. Like, objectively. Well, for, like, well, well first and foremost, this is Rostafa. This is not AJ. Was, well, it okay. says AJ Adams on the thing. Yeah, it, I, I'm um, Rostafa. But AJ, uh, it's okay, buddy. yeah, it says. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, man. I'm I don't um whatever. I I I know I'm not the only black guy that's here, but it's okay. Don't worry, it's cool. Um, I oh, you're black. I, I, I'm gonna say it like this, brother. You stay away from his daughter, <laughs> you fucking goddamn goddamn. Oh, stop Ava. rubbing in the stop rubbing in the wound. Salt in the wound, but I'll say it like this: Rhea Ripley 
uh, in terms of, and I actually no, no, before I even get to that, the only big return that we even got, if you consider it big, was Riddle. And, you know, and him that's and Miz not even, most likely, yeah, did, like, it's not even why a big didn't, thing. Why didn't we get, okay, I mean, maybe I'm a simpleton, but why didn't we get Braun Breaker? He just lost the title. He's NXT. He's obviously ready. We need somebody new, like, desperately, especially well, after what he's, he did to he's Cody. He's staying in NXT. He's oh, he in is? NXT See, I, I, don't, I don't watch NXT, yeah. so I don't know. I was just going over Yeah, the yeah buzz, he just so. did an angle with, he just did an angle where he just turned heel tonight. Oh, he did. See, I didn't. Wa- I don't watch you next. Oh, he had to so. turn heel after his dad said it to the transgender girl. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. Um, but with going back to Rhea, though, again, Was if it you a were to give transgender her- girl or man, I get confused by that. I don't no, know sorry. actually, but I just figured, Fair you know enough. what? They've got to turn him heel, like after what Dad did. You know, you're the bad guy now. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, put it this way. If Rhea were to go over with both titles, again, it's not a bad decision. And again, we already have um, Bianca over a year now holding the title. It's not uncommonplace for even Dude, for a women's champion to go over a year. Dude, so, they're, they're talking I mean, he, about having uh, Bianca be the new taker because she's got a three-year streak at, at Mania. Like, that's like... I heard. On, don't I heard. Yeah. I heard. And so she Um, could like, I I wouldn't mind at all. Actually, I think they, I've been saying this for a long time. They don't have enough women. They need to unify the women's title and, and there doesn't need to be an NXT women tag title. There should just be one women's tag title. Like the original ones uh, that that's defended across all three brands. You know what I mean? You have one woman's title, the the two main brands. Yeah. They do have a, they do have a lot of women on the roster, but unfortunately, and again, I've talked about this with Joe on numerous occasions where, for example, the, the Rhea Ripley and Charlotte had the best match or the best women's match in the weekend. And I even dare say with all due respect to the tag they, team main event. No, they had the match they, of the they night. Were, they, 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 oh, yes. That's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at. No, we talked about like I'm I'm on the losing end. So I do a, a, a show every Sunday called Dork Side of the Ring. And my two co-hosts, Joe and Johnny, they they think the Usos match was the match of the night. And I was like, while it deserved to be the main event and had the most story, I'm sorry, those yes. women stole those women stole the fucking show. Like this is how opinion. I looked at it. I, I told you I know. told Joe this when we were doing the after show. I said, okay, right now three point five match, like you know it's a good match. But then it kept raising the bar, and I'm like, oh my god, am I watching like a? Because these women to me. Weren't, weren't just wrestling. They were beating the crap out of each other. And that's what and made were, it more compelling. And Charlotte was really selling, man. Like, like, dude, like she was, she were kind of, she's like the female Brock Lesnar. Cause like, she does not get enough credit for when she sells. Cause when she sells, she really does a good job. You know, I, and I, I get, would you dare say, would you dare say that she's, and again, Ric Flair is a completely different category, but do you think she sells in a unique way more so than her dad did? Yeah, man, I put her at like so. I and a lot of people disagree. I, if okay, whenever when if you watch a Brock Lesnar match, whenever Brock Lesnar is selling for someone, it's it's magic, dude. Like you you kind of like even though he's like the alpha male of our species, and realistically nobody on the roster could fuck it, fucking touch him. You know what I mean? He makes you believe they can when he's selling. That's how good he is at it yeah. because he's a he's a fucking beast. But you he sells to where you believe. So look at uh, Charlotte. You, you know, like I don't know if you heard, but she's taking time off to do this bodybuilder. Not surprised. Not, not surprised. Well, well, she's going into this bodybuilder competition thing. She's really passionate about, and that's what. So she's about to take time off for that. And Charlotte and Rhea both are 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 huge. Like they're, they're, and they were, they're, yeah, they're, they're big. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, I don't mean that to me. I mean, they're big. They're like, I mean, I wouldn't want to meet them in a dark alley. They both Charlotte is the shit out of me. Yeah, Charlotte's my size, like my height. Like, she's, yeah, yeah, and bro. Here's and here's the other thing too. I, I, people were touching back at the last Mania match that they had. All due respect, the match that they had at this year's Mania compared to a couple of years ago is night and day. I mean, yeah. Charlotte even Charlotte even then was still on the top level, but she got even better, more so in ring wise. And with Rhea, she just got more. Ooh. Honestly, uh, uh, God the best just killed you. Uh, uh, 
if that was I think that was Rostafa. We lost you, man. You'd like roboted and Oh, you're, are you are there? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you went we can hear you can now, you but me? you went you went full robot. You raised right. a piece of shit. Here go the donations. Uh Pat Thompson became a member again. Yo, Pat, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for that. Holy shit, I'm behind in the donos. I'll play a couple donations. Pat, thank you, man. Actually, that's your first yeah, time just, becoming a member. What's up? No, no, no. You could do that. Play some donations. Play a couple donations. Um, Pat, thank you. D. Welsh, thank you earlier for dropping that $205 bomb. We had some real bombs tonight. Like, we've had more Holy bombs shit. tonight than WrestleMania. So, I think it's fucking so, crazy. I just, I just got a... I just got a, email, you know, I get yeah. these auto emails from a stock thing. Smoke check this weed out. every day. Oh yeah, my WWE yeah. stock is not. Is very much no, alive, no, especially with Gomez McMahon having his way and making five million dollars. Dollars. I hope he spends it soon because he's not getting any younger unless he's drinking blood from the storages of the Clintons and Epstein Island. Oh my God! Wow. Serious. No, I think stroke Vince game. McMahon is even worse than those guys. But whoa. You so hey. So? What what I was going to tell you guys, yeah. check this out. Uh, Q4 revenue for Rumble increased 579%. Yeah, that's crazy. That's cool. well, I saw the, Did you see the stock today? It like hits, I think, at least $76 yeah, today. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. But dude, no, I'm, I, I'm, do you remember I mean, when I bought the stock? I bought the stock live, Dork Knight, like eight years ago or something. I bought the stock live on my show because I knew it was going to go up. And I bought it at yeah. like $10. And but and then it and it went up to like ninety dollars, and yeah. I didn't have a lot because I didn't have a lot of money. But I, I you know I sold it all pretty much except for one. I well, kept well one remember share. back back right before right before the uh, the scandal happened. I think it was like what Triple H and like Kevin Dunn and, and people like that in the company. They actually sold a lot of their stock, right? And they made like whatever money. And I think they. I'm not sure if they went back into the stock market for that specific reason. They probably did. I was like, hush hush. But they got out of that just because of like, you know, there was something that was coming and they did predict that something was coming. But then right after the fact, Vince had the scandal. It's like everybody's like, OK, we're out of here. So um, finally, yeah, someone I, has I, worse I, facial hair than me, though. Like finally, someone has worse <laughs> facial hair than me. Vince McMahon has done it. He looks like Vincent Price Hitler. Like it's he's like, you know what? I'm gonna That's look a like very Vincent. good description. He That's really does. He looks like Vincent Price Hitler, and he dyed all his hair what's black. That, what's What's that movie? I can't remember. It, it, it's like um, where the guys like dressed. He's like dressed up in like some type of like almost like a almost like a neo Nazi slash like Darth Vader type. Where, where and his and his line goes, "Of course," or something like. I can't remember the. Are you, ta- are you talking Superman about? Movie. Are you talking about Street Fighter with uh, the guy who played? It, it might have been. It, it might have been because I keep seeing that as a meme where Vince is like dressed up like some type of like imperial sort of kind of like, you know, like general or something like that. It's all over Twitter. I think, yeah, I think you're talking about Gomez from uh, the Adams Family, but in the Street Fighter movie, the guy that played Gomez. Right. Oh, Raul Julia. Yeah, he died. Yeah. He died making that movie. He died right after the movie. Yeah. 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 He had like, uh, what did he get? Pancreatic cancer or something? So, so, yeah. Some something kind of like cancer. that. Yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah, that sucked. That guy was on a roll with movies, time, but yeah, very Vincent Price like as well, and uh, pretty crazy. Because yeah. at first, because like, when, when that image first came out, where he first had the mustache on, I'm thinking this is fake. Somebody put that in, but then I see him at the Hall of Fame. I'm like, oh my god, it's real. I, oh I my just, god, it's real. That's what Leah, my I, wife, said. That Leah said that she goes, oh, I thought that was like a fake Photoshop. She goes, what the hell? I'm like, no, this is really his must. But it's because there's so many fake Photoshops of it now because it's come meme. But no, he yeah, this is really what he looks like. I don't know. I think Vince McMahon sets a terrible precedent for humanity, and and it, it bothers me. Like I, He's I, Don Corleone. Well, see, I'm a or sick person. Corleone. I don't – it's like deep down, it's like I know that I that Vince is bad with many things. But like I love him, it's very weird. Like I feel, dis- I, I, dude. I, I, the, the last eight months have been like awesome. Like I've been like, if you've been watching my show, I've gone like I. The only thing that got me back into wrestling was AEW, and then for the last eight months, I haven't given a shit about AEW, and I've been all about WWE. And now I, I can already tell from 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 Sunday and Monday, and I bet you Friday I'm going to be saying the same fucking thing on my show. He's just he he the dude is so out of touch 
He's just going to bury his product and he doesn't care because he's just. And, and, and Joe, I'm not sure if you reported this or I'm dork. I'm not sure if you. But from his this, point of but... view, he's killing it so that he doesn't care because he thinks he's kicking yeah. ass like they're making more money than they've ever made before. And that's what he cares about. Go ahead, Rustav. I'm yeah. sorry. I was just going to say right before Raw went on the air, there were two different script re- uh, revis- uh, revisions. Um, because a fan was actually right by the, um, I guess where they do like the control, like, you know, the, uh, the camera angles and stuff like that, your camera, uh, camera side. And there was a guy constantly getting scripts and like getting a renewal of scripts. And this is like 45 minutes before the show goes on. Oh, and I'm like, damn, like, you know, it's, we're back to this again, where there's constantly rewrites. Cause dude, for years, there was constantly people that were in the writer's room, especially if they got let go or they got fired, where they would admit saying, yeah, we would go in on a Sunday. We had everything set up. Vince would read the script, would tear it up in front of our faces and say, rewrite it. Well, what I'm worried, here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that Vince comes in right tonight on Monday, Monday Night Raw, and I'm worried that he has a motivation of, you know what, this big announcement just happened, this thing's happening, we got to make waves and do stuff that's going to make, you know, so that's why I have Brock Lesnar attack Cody. But is it that? Is it really that? Or is it just Occam's razor, which so, is you need a big guy like Brock to face Cody so Cody can beat him and get some legitimacy. Well, also Lesnar's... Lesnar's contract, I've heard, is coming up, so maybe they're what thinking... What the hell are you oh. doing back here? I thought you went to bed. Yeah. So, so I was gonna go to bed, but then I um. Oh, he's I back. I'll probably, I'll probably have another fucking week where I don't sleep. Jesus. Well, welcome. dude, it's so crazy. It's you don't you don't even understand. I was so hyped for Mania, and I was so hyped to see Roman and Cody, and then I fell asleep during Oscar and Bianca. And honestly, I think falling asleep and then waking up and watching it in the morning kind of helped me because I wasn't angry when Cody lost. I was just like. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> like I, I'm sure. Like if I had stayed up all night, I would have been like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, like well, uh, Omar, yeah. he was crazy. Because <laughs> I remember on Saturday you were kind of like really, really like zombied out. You're really tired, and then like you know, of course, obviously Sunday the same thing, but for in a different way. And then again, you see, watch the playback. Funny enough, I actually may just rewatch night one just for kicks, just because again that was my favorite night, and I was really pulling for night two this year to really like you know come out with like, like something big but it's just basically a repeat of last year and i would even dare say night one of this year blew away last year's night one yeah oh yeah i mean night night, night night two was kind of plagued man you had the you know the the although snoop dog is like the mvp of pay-per-view like shout he out to really snoop dog yeah he he, he, yeah. he stepped up his game because he understood because remember yeah. it wasn't until he got in the ring that he got instruction but he knew he had to get in the ring because he knew something was wrong so well i don't i don't think he got instruction on the on the I, punching I, I the miz yeah i don't when think he punched he the either. miz i think that really was like okay might as well punch him but the people's elbow yeah was the referee calling it yeah, yeah. um you know, it's and it's funny, funny. Dave, Dave, Dave Meltzer said it was the worst people's elbow, and again, guess what happens on Raw? Miz says, the worst people's elbow. Then why did you not only sell it, but then why did you get beat one, two, three, you dunce? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you know? I, thought, I thought it was the most entertaining people's elbow I ever saw. Sure, his running the ropes sucked, but his little pause and his jump up, and he... Even more so than Eugene? <laughs> the people, the people's elbow is a stupid move. I've never liked the people's elbow. I also yeah. hate it when the Rock. I hate it when the when the Rock beat Punk during his 434 day reign. He beat him with a people's elbow, and he How? sat there and took it. Yeah, oh that, my that god, was, he laid down. That was rough. See, those are the one of the times. Bum. Those are one of the times where I can feel Triple Punk's H hate, and I can good. understand it. He will be a fall guy like Bischoff. Then go to U and be head creative booker for Ring of Honor. Or should I say, Ring of Hunter? Damn, the goon chiming in. Haven't? What's up, goon? Uh, Triple H is screwed. He's gonna, I bet. I bet Triple H is gonna leave WWE so he could go book Ring of Honor. What if he, Triple H he, wins here's, there? Here's, Triple H. Triple H just got what, like a five million dollar bonus. I think he's yes. fine. Yeah, I think he's yeah. fine. Triple yeah. H will. I, never it's also. Win. I've been hearing a lot that he's stepping down as create as head of creative. From people in the chat, but every every time I've read this deal, it said that he will remain as head of creative. So I don't know well, where people right, are getting as that. As of right now, well, as of right now, 
as of right now, nothing contractually has changed uh, from what has been said. Again, he's still the head of creative. Contractually, I think what happens now, I think what's going to happen more often now is him and Vince are going to be collaborating a lot. And yes, Vince will have the final say, but Triple H isn't a fucking dumb, isn't one of the writing team where he was like, yes, sir, where like Vince rips up his whole fucking script. Triple H could actually at least talk to Vince, you know? It's a it's a different yeah. story. It's a different I, I story know. with with uh, twenty two year old writers from fucking it, you know it, college. It, it depends on if you who you believe. If you're more of an Uncle Dave guy or a John Ross Sap fightful select guy, because they're I don't they're really having... believe any of I don't really believe any of these fucking reporters because half the time, half the time they're just fed false information or information from people who just want to stir shit up and are told from the boss, yeah. Feed him this and tell him that this is going on so they can just fuck off. It's not like, even it's not even from Vince. It's literally from half the locker room and just people from behind the scenes that apparently they only give him so much information, but they're not all concrete fact. Yeah, and then it's like – and then like when he turns out to be wrong about them, it's like plans changed. It's like maybe it just and, those plans and, and which, were never going to happen. Had, well, it's funny that you mentioned that because there was even times where plans were going to go down and then allegedly, and again, I can't first remember who exactly said it, but for example, like they were going to do something, Meltzer reported it, and then for whatever reason, WWE like changed it on the fly just, just to screw around with Meltzer, and which they've done in the past apparently. So, you know, good. anything. Good. I'm any, glad. Anything, Fuck any, Meltzer. Anything can prove. Anything can pretty much happen. And, and it's not just Meltzer, but it's everybody from the torch to Fightful. Um, all these, you know, uh, you know, there's even wrestling dirt sheets that are still trying to get a name, make a name for themselves, but they don't even have proper sources. And, and it's <laughs> you know also I mean? like the whole idea of the dirt sheets is basically to ruin the show before it even happens. And then and then when that shit, when it does happen the way they report it, they're like so predictable. I mean, and then Dave's going on like, I just don't think they should have done this. We all saw it coming. It's like we all saw it coming because you spoiled it in your fucking dirt sheets. Oh, <laughs> I mean, oh especially, duh. especially AEW. Especially AEW. There's a couple times where people were going to be, you know, making their debut or some guy or something was going to happen. And then people online were going after Meltzer Hart going, dude, why are you spoiling this during a live pay per view? Don't do this. You are an idiot. Stop being, you know. You and, know. Then when he, and then when he's wrong about it, then he's mad about it. Then he's like, I don't think they should have done it. I think they should have done what they originally planned until plans changed. Like, ugh, I just, I don't know. He, I, even Meltzer, even, and, even Meltzer and a few, Meltzer and a few wrestling journalists, just the way they speak, like it makes it seem like they have this like know-it-all attitude when in oh, reality, I, I, I don't want same. you to get me wrong. I can't stand Meltzer. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just. No, no, no I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Meltzer. I'm talking, it really, it's like, it's Meltzer and Sola Monster who really just piss me off so much with their like, I like I'm above you attitude and the way they talk. Like if you really think that's how it's gonna go, then you're well, wrong. Out of all the, and then they're wrong a the hundred times. Out of all the wrestling journalists, uh, I can't remember the guy from the Torch, but him and Meltzer are probably the people that get paid the most from subscribers that just want to get a little bit more dirt out of everybody else that's in the industry, especially since they've had longevity since the 80s. And again, these are wrestling fans that are paying this, and they're not being paid by WWE or AEW, or at least as far as to my knowledge of that. But it's mostly wrestling fans that are paying for this stuff. And just like the New York Times or any other journal, it's like if you're going to – you know, print out something, you're only going to get a limited amount of information, especially when you go on a story and they're only going to give you so much information because if they told you the whole thing, then plans and surprises and all that related to the subject matter are not valid or not, you know, there to, you know, be a surprise. So again, I have very limited information when it comes to any of the dirt sheets because I don't necessarily read them. If I find consistencies within stories, then I'll go about and saying, okay, then this is happening. And then until either, you know, somebody from the company or that said talent that's being discussed verifies saying, no, that's not the correct information. Then I go with that because, again, that's coming from the actual talent or that's coming from an actual employee of an organization. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I <laughs> am going to bed this time, everybody. This is the last you'll see of me for tonight. Um.
I don't know. I guess Joe's doing an AEW stream tomorrow, but I still will probably call in to talk about some bullshit, talk about my balls. Uh, love you guys, all of you, except for you, Jay Menace, you fuck. Yeah, I'm not talking to you in IG or whatever the fuck you want. You fucking say you're going to roll up on me, yet you didn't fucking call into the show when I was on all night, and you had some beef that you wanted to expose me on, so go fuck yourself, you little fucking You got fucking that beefy cunt. Mario. And nobody knows what we're talking about because they didn't even hear this argument, so they just wonder why we're ranting on him this whole show. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> fuck that. There was a... It, I saw some people going fire, like Luke, you fire or some shit, and I am, yeah. I am. Anyway, good night, everybody. All right, good night, baby. Assalamu alaikum. Good night. Well, there he goes. He might be really going to bed this time. I don't know. We we don't really know. If he'll really He's gonna read himself his own out. bedtime story. Now, what will SmackDown look like if Raw is such a disappointment? That's the question. Now, is what the hell is gonna happen on SmackDown? Will that, so that be a disappointment? That's the thing. If McMahon. If McMahon shows up in Oregon, it's fucked. Okay, that like like and and we'll we'll know because all these fucking rabid dirt sheet reporters will will let us know, or TMZ or somebody will let us know if McMahon is seen in Oregon. We'll know Friday. If he'll, I would say afternoon. if he does, I will say if he. Oh, I was just, just going to say, if he actually does, and if he does end up in Oregon, yeah, most likely he'll have his hands dirty on a few different things. But it's like yeah. not going to be that much because again, it's still the beginning stages of him slowly but surely getting control of you know creative. Which again, we kind of had a night. Vince McMahon, he's going to take his big dick, he's going to throw it out on the fucking table, and he's going to say, "I'm back, bitches," like that, like. Yeah, especially after this announcement of the merger. You know, now that the business yeah, part yeah. is over, now it's time to show off. Yeah, like he he has nothing to lose. He has no fear. Like the WWE board can't fucking touch him. He's got a new contract. He even this motherfucker even got to control. He gets to he retains rights to all of his IP, his character, his name, his likeness, and he gets control over any like biographies or uh whatever uh and isn't it ironic anything how the about people, him and it isn't ironic how the people that were on the board at one point all just said okay i'm leaving and i'm never coming back because of this incident or what have you and next thing you know vince just automatically just comes back Wait. and even after all the votes of saying hey he should be back he shouldn't be back who said they were That's leaving because- and never coming back though like you know, the oh, board well, member. I mean, protest. His, his daughter, his own daughter. Come on, guys. Yeah. His own daughter. She walked away. You know. Yeah, I don't think they're happy. His interference. I think that they are not happy with what he did. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and probably Triple H knows he just has to go along with it. And obviously, he's got respect for Vince being the creator of everything. So. Where I think Stephanie probably is the one, like you just said, is is the one that is probably calling him out and like, no, Dad, this is bullshit. Whereas you know Triple H is kind of like, okay, Vince, you know, you know, what's he gonna do? You know, he feels he owes Vince so much. Stephanie does. Well, not only that, Vince is probably still signing his checks. You know, shit. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and they're all together. Um, ooh, I just got a text from somebody hot. But no, so SmackDown, Vince has stayed away from SmackDown quite a bit. And even going back years ago, you know, to like six, seven years ago, I remember when I would have conversations with Road Dog uh, in the DMs and stuff like that. And Road Dog would tell me, and, I, and here's the weird thing is he would tell me this stuff and I wouldn't even report it because it wasn't on the record type of stuff. And he wasn't giving it to me to report really. But, you know, there were times, nights where he would, you know, I'd talk to him and he'd be like, oh, Vince wasn't here or Vince left after 10 minutes. Or whatever, and he, and you'd find out that Jesus Vince abandons SmackDown a lot, like he would, and there were times where it was reported. There'd be re- like Vince is not at SmackDown tonight. Like he he misses SmackDown quite a bit, but he well, and if, hasn't that changed because SmackDown gets on average like two point four million viewers compared to Raw. Yes, a lot of times this, more so than Raw. Oh, no, this it, you're it, right. No, this it was always, it's, it's consistently. More. It was prior to the Fox thing, to the Fox deal, so that's true. But he has missed SmackDown still more than Raw um, over the last few years. 
Whatever reason that is, I don't know, because it's Friday, it's later in the week. I, I don't know. I mean, same thing happened. Same thing happened twenty years ago when SmackDown, you know, it was kicking Raw's ass in in ratings. Um, and because I was all hand asks on Raw because after the the uh, deal went through and they bought WCW's rights and tape library, you know, uh, Raw was declining in viewership, especially after the invasion flopped. And then that's when Paul yeah. Heyman came in and created the whole SmackDown Six. I mean, it's literally mirroring 20 years ago, except it's not as many viewers as it was 20 years ago. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I can't find. I'm trying to see uh, if they've released any of the matches that are going to happen on SmackDown this week. I don't see or like announced anything. I don't. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. Um, I know there's the, well, there won't be as many promos obviously as there is on Raw because again, Raw is more like the you know the, the promo talking show when SmackDown's really the wrestling show. Yeah. Well, uh. they'll definitely do something with the Bloodline, at least with the Usos. I'm assuming. Um, yeah, because they, again, they're still. They didn't do much with that. I mean, they did. They were on Raw, but it's like. What did you think about that? I feel like a lot of people breezed over that, and Sami Zayn was arguably like the number two or number one B, you know what I mean, like thing to see for WrestleMania, and yet the post celebration of that was kind of just like, okay, we're just gonna put him in a match, <laughs> you know, yeah, against baby faces. I think they're look. Here's here's a my thought. Pro, the more I've thought about it, because I was actually really I don't know. Um, Joe, I think you saw my shit on Twitter. I was, I was really like Cody losing kind of fucked with me. And the yeah. more I thought about it, I was like, all right, originally it was going to be the rock and there was no way the rock was going to win. Right. So if that's the case, then that means Roman was going to still be champ after WrestleMania. So that was always part of the plan. And so the rock thing falls through. So they make the best of this Cody Rhodes thing that they have because i still think they're kind of holding out for the rock but i don't think that i don't think that match needs the title yeah they though. don't need the title that's the whole that's what i was you know? saying the other night i was like why don't you know you think cody wins this and then roman starts building his way going through people and then eventually you know he faces the rock at SummerSlam or wrestlemania I and the, and the other thing also, we don't need a repeat of, with with punk as well as far as like rock going over because there's no way rock should be going over no, 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 yeah, no, no. I totally agree. Um, I mean, <clears throat> Rock and Cena and those guys at this point, they're there to put people over. They're there to do the favors. They're they're there to pass the torch. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I just I don't. Nope. Dork no, I just don't have hope. No, yeah. yeah, no, no, I didn't. I, I, oh, you, yeah, your brain so, froze. I get it. My, my, yeah, yeah, I've been my, doing yeah. the same. The, the <laughs> only way, the only way I could see Rock being involved, even and again, I know you're tired of talking about it, Joe, and I kind of am too. I know we've been beating way, around the thing. I, I even though that we could potentially still see it at a mania again, this is if that happens, Cody already has the strap early on. So, but who, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. If if not Cody, who 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 the fuck do we have that's going to go up against Roman? Especially now, Cody's side like he's doing a he's on a side quest with Brock now. So who's 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 fighting Roman now? Who? Nobody. Sa like, may, uh, maybe Sammy. I don't know. It's very weird. I don't know. You're right. It's a great point. Where are they? This is another reason why I wish we kind of also had a ranking or, system or WWE or Dork. <laughs> maybe maybe we're gonna get. Cody versus Brock and Roman takes a break and then we'll get Brock, Cody and Roman. Some kind of triple, triple threat. threat. I guess. Oh god, I, I'm I'm not going to dig that at all actually. Um not because I don't like the triple threat concept it's just for those three. Oof. Oof. You won't believe yeah, that either Lesnar or Cody are going to win. And what about the idea that Lesnar pinning Cody could move the titles? It's just yeah. I don't like it. I I well, here if they if they do the same thing they did with Brock and um, and and Cena, I'd like to see Cody win this program with Lesnar, especially with Lesnar on his way out. If 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 that shit's true, but in the interim, what's the world champion doing? Especially he's got both world titles. So what we're just we've got we've got our biggest baby face going on a side quest, 
our second biggest baby face is a tag champ. So he's in that thing, you know, like who's filling this void to face Roman. Like I can't think of anybody. Randy can, can Orton anybody. says pad man in the chat. Well, right well, Randy, now, Randy, I mean, that, that's a great clear. idea, but I don't think he, I think he's a cripple. Isn't yeah. he? Isn't he? I don't he, know. He's still he's... not cleared. And also there's still, I mean, again, they, if big E for whatever reason got cleared, which is a very big, if he would probably be a good idea, but again, no, this is only so much you could do with Biggie at this point. No one's going to believe that Roman's well, going to well, lose is, to is anybody Biggie, now. Any, is Biggie anywhere near being cleared? There's no reports that verify it, but again, no, I, I he's he's been going to see doctors is, is based upon what reports have said. But the thing is, though, he's not been medically cleared, and even if he was, there's only so much you can do with them because again, there's certain moves that he can't do anymore. Um, he's a big, obviously, he's a big guy. You can't do any t too much things with his neck. Same thing with Austin, you know, what you know, with his injury. Um, it, again, this is another reason why if they put the belt on Cody, it's like as far as heels go. You know what I mean? Like legit heels that can go after him besides Roman and besides Ooh. Brock. Who did you have? Oh, 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 oh. That's way easier than faces. Uh, first of all, we've got Solo Sokoa. We need to turn uh, Drew McIntyre heel like yesterday, and I think that's coming. So you've got him. We've got you, you, dude, there's Theory. all kinds. You've got Austin Theory. You've got all kinds of smarmy, shitty fucking heels all the live long day that could keep a, a baby face champion busy. What other faces do we have? That's that's my thing. You got Cody Rhodes. <laughs> yeah. And now he's tied up with Brock. You've got Sami Zayn tied up in the tag scene. Who the fuck else is there? Like WWE. And, there, and there's shit. only so many celebrities. There's only so many, only so many celebrity or, or past legends that you can bring in. And even then, it, it it disrespects the roster at this point because everybody's trying to get over. But even Triple H said in the press conference, which again was still sober, and he said, you know, there are a lot of people that say that they deserve, you know, because they work hard. It's, it's like, well, do whatever you can to work harder because there's probably somebody that's working harder than you, i.e. Roman, i.e. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cody. But again, you can't you can't just expect you can't just or expect as much as you're gonna hate this. Just to my, a, yeah. my rookie of the year, Logan Paul. That motherfucker's my rookie of the year, and I like I called that on the on my show. Well, I said it like, I said it like this. I, it's like you can't just expect a company just to make you. You also have to make you. It's it's a double edged sword that has to constantly be. You know, um, be you know, uh, go in the right direction in the right place at the right time for all the right reasons. But unfortunately, we don't have a lot of. I mean, guess if you want to call them superstars, but we don't have crossover exactly. appeal megastars or larger than life characters. We only have very okay. few of them. And right. So hey, I got like uh, I got the ninety second cut off. If I want to get laid, I got ninety seconds. Is oh, there you got to go for, it. for me you before can... I go? Cause, yes, because my girls. No, Listen, we're good. No, you got to go do it, man. Guys, go follow the Dork Knight on Tell Plug all your shit, Dork Knight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dork Knight LV. D-O-R-K-K-N-I-G-H-T-L-V. That's on YouTube, Twitter, everything, you know. So um, if all you right. pay for a good time, call 900 Dork. I'm not even kidding. That's all right, right, Joe. I love you, man. <laughs> Thanks, Hit me bro. up later, dude. I, I got to do more with you, but I got to go. All right, Bye, man. Guys. Go get late. I love it. That was me last night. I got woken up last night by the wife. Oh, was happy ending? Um, I don't know. It was uh, it was like she was. I think she was messing with me, so I'd wake up. But like, like almost like you did it. Oh my god, Jesse was been on mute this whole time. Hi, Jesse and J Rod too. J Rod, what's up? What do you got to say, man? You've been sitting there forever muted. What's up? What's up, guys? You're unmuted now, man. What do you think of Raw? Huh? You've been jerking off. Oh man, yeah. It was to me. It was the garbage. Garbage, yeah. Now, out of all the male wrestlers in WWE, which is the most attractive one, you would think? <laughs> oh, shit. Well, which one? Which one do you think is the most attractive male wrestler? Go ahead. Um, The Rock. <laughs> um... Uh... What are you going to do? A Cena? Uh, <laughs> that's rumors. So, J-Rod, do you smell what the cock is cooking? You want to smell the rock's cock? 
Is that what you said? You pubic haired chin son of a bitch. Let me tell you something. The Rock ain't never gonna go down on you, J-Rod. The Rock ain't never gonna spank the tank and the monkey skank like that is your mother. The Rock ain't never gonna lick your taint. The Rock ain't gonna go in the paint. The Rock ain't gonna do the thing. The Rock ain't gonna do the jam. The Rock ain't gonna butt pump you on a Saturday night in San Francisco. It's never gonna happen. Oh, look at that. Oh, Rock, you scared him away. Look at that. He, he fucking ran away, Rock. Look what you did to him, Rock. Jesus Christ. I, I know that's, that's all it took to make fucking J-Rod disappear from Discord. Was the He's been here all night screaming on mute, and then he gets on, and in three seconds, the Rock made him disappear because he sexually advanced on him. That's so weird. Unbelievable. All right. Well, there goes... J Rod, who'd been waiting all night to speak, I feel like, and and you know we f now we found something out about him. He likes the tan meat. That's nice. Somebody who isn't very tan, Jesse tonight, looking good. Good to see him. <sighs> Mustafa, are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here, brother. All right, well, why don't you give your uh, closing thoughts? And uh, we got AJ Adams here. We'll unmute Mother him. Fucker. What up, AJ Adams? How you doing, motherfucker? Do the whole night, dork night. Thought you were Rastafa. It was weird. Is he an educated rapist? Uh, he appears to be. Yeah, he's very strange. He doesn't know who's talking he's when the lights his, are. He's blinking. talking about his daughter and and sleeping with her and drinking her juices. What's wrong with that man? I, I, you know, there's a lot to edit out of what Dork Knight said tonight. He attacked the Popcast guys at one point. He's talked about his daughter being attractive. Um. <laughs> He, I, I think he's still Mexican kids, probably. Yeah, he is very strange. I don't know if he understands how bizarre he really is, you know, quite honestly. But there will <laughs> be... Chirper 20, <laughs> 21 in the check because he hit rock bottom. Yeah, J-Rod, yeah, yeah, he, he disappeared. He, he got he terrified. Wants to, he, wants to, he wants to rock to hit his bottom. That's what he's talking about. Yep. Yep. He got well, weird. He fucking disappeared quick. He was like, oh, no, and he ran out of here. He was gone. It was very weird. Yeah. I'm um, to go get a vibrator and go crazy. Now, I, I think, you know, and Dork Knight is a guy who makes us white people look bad, I think. Right, AJ Adams, you would think? Yeah, I'd, I'd, if I see him on the street, I'd go the other way and keep my yeah. kids away from him. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, 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 keep my, I, keep my, I keep my dog away from him, too, and probably violate that. <laughs> violate your dog, yeah. Oh, and he thinks he <laughs> needs to keep his daughter away. I think he said something like, I need to keep my daughter away from people because she's attractive. And it was like, what? Basically, he's like, I'm going to keep her in the closet and keep violating. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, like he wants her all to himself is what it sounded like. Like he, I'm doing, I'm, I'm my own Bill Cosby. I'm Bill Cosby. No one else. Yeah. Uh, I right. bet you can call a white snake moan. Yeah. Well, we didn't get to hear from you on WrestleMania weekend, uh, AJ Adams. So good to see you. It's been a while since you've been on here. Yeah, I've been uh, actually on vacation. You mean in Fucking jail? And you went to jail? Is that what? No, it... well, sir. I actually have a, a real job. You understand that? And with vacation time. I know. I'm kidding. But no. So you I, I... you went. You watched Raw. You know. You watched WrestleMania. You thought. What What did you think about WrestleMania this year? Uh, night one was pretty good. Night two was, it sucked. It really did. It pretty, sucked. I, except for the last match. I like the last match. I was not like well, I thought it. night two okay. reminded me of most WWE night WrestleMania nights, but night one felt like something special where they really hit on everything. <laughs> uh, oh man, when I seen that, I was pissed. I was like, how the fuck you let this guy lose? But you know, who cares? But anyway, what up? A fucking phone died. Uh, that's good oh, for you. Okay, anyway. nice. Sure. No, J Rod, it's okay, man. Well, yeah. listen, man. Um, yeah. what, what do you think is going to go down since they sold the company? What do you, think, you think it's going to be big changes? It, it, well, it, 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 nothing's going to change literally for a while because, again, yeah. they still have to set up the deal and everything. I, I, again, it's going to probably take, what, six months okay. to a year? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a while. And even with that, it's a partnership. You know what I mean? They might have some things that they suggest and they go over. But I mean, for the most part, you know, I don't think you're going to see a ton of change. But we know one thing. These guys just love making money. They don't care. Oh, yeah. 
if the storylines yeah. aren't even that good and they could lose literally they could lose like 300,000 viewers they don't care oh, yeah. as yeah, long as they right. can make money like they're like oh I made money from more shit um okay discord crash so I'm gonna call it a night on discord because discord just shit its pants I started this night off doing a solo re- podcast for like about an hour and 50 minutes by myself and then we jumped on Discord, had a great time over there, but back to solo, I guess, again, while Discord crashes. I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna, oh, right Allison Tuckwab is back with more right donation. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Now, hold that thought, I'm AJ leave Adams. Briefcase right here. Criminal. Uh, 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 I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch! I'm so, I'm run, so fat. Run, you fucking fat bitch! Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? Run, you fat bitch! Or run, you fat bitch! You're so big, you're so big. I agree with that lady what she said earlier that wish Vince McMahon would croak over so Triple H can take over and talent would come back knowing that Vince is totally gone what I mean is in sex seating him in the ground. Jesus. You're so big. Damn Allison. Allison dropping the bomb on Vince. God damn savage on Vince. You Allison. all have decided to take your hard earned oh, money. Shit. And to fund my show, to fund what I do, to fund what I believe in, to fund my Sasha's mouth blood dropping 30. JCS Army, donate to me. Sasha's mouth blood. Acknowledge me. Mouth blood. Joe, I love you. I'm pissed drunk. And heard someone <laughs> say they fucked their daughter? Get no. that bozo out of the call. I just checked I've been following you for eight years. Damn. I'd, any of these people in this call is that bad. Ha ha. Sa- <laughs> Thank you, Sasha's mouth But No, I don't think he does that to his daughter. I just think he said he thought his daughter was good looking, which is okay, I guess. But it was just a little strange. But no, he didn't say that. He did not say that he does that to her. Did anybody realize that Typo Negative was uh, doing the real Kane theme song? You know what I mean? Anybody ever think about that? Like, Peter Steele worked really hard to make a theme for Kane because he, like, identified with the character of Kane so much. And they made this theme for Kane. And then when WWE got it, they, they were kind of like, uh, it's not quite whatever and then they took it and they remade it into the Kane song we all know but as I'm, I'm such a big typo negative fan that it would have been awesome to hear that theme I think in the end WWE did go with the right call because that Kane theme is so good we talked about this the other day but man when you sit and you listen to what Peter Steele made I feel like this this Kane song version which was the first version could have been like the movie Kane. Like if Kane had a movie about him or something, this would be the music instead of the WWF music they ended up using. But also I think WWE like owned the theme for a while. But like, and th- there's no lyrics. Peter Steele never wrote lyrics to it from what I understand. But I mean, it's so typo negative, but it's also so Kane. It's just too bad, man. Listen to the way it begins. I just love Rest in peace to Peter Steele. I love the I love I love Typo Negative. And the whole beginning is so slow building. You know that's why they went with that more poppy uh, Kane version, the one we all know. But you can hear it here. You can hear. It.
It just sounds badass, bro. And it's just too bad they never got to use that. I wonder what the lyrics, if he had made lyrics, would have been like. Fuck around with it. It's called uh, Out of the Fire. Um, And then, of course, came when, uh, when the cane went to. Uh, I think Jim Johnson just, I mean, obviously he took inspiration from that. And he made it. Uh, what do you make it like? Uh, Like, I think that fits Kane, you know, better in, in so many ways, but I, I totally get what Typo was doing and what Peter Steele was doing, you know? It just sounds great. It sounds great. I throw a little vocals on it and we gotta we can make that typo negative song. Let's bring Peter Steele back from the dead and we'll make that typo song. Peter, I got you. <laughs> I got you, brother. Ooh, out of the fire. Alright, let's go back to the donations. Uh but yeah, I always I always like bringing that up because fucking Peter Steele's awesome. Hard earned money. And to fund my show, to fund what I do, the legend to fund Derek Hans, to fund my godly ass, JCS Army, donate to me. Ah, I don't know why I'm doing that. Acknowledge me. What up? Jeff Rhoda Boss is here. Shiva. <laughs> hey guys, hit that like button if, if you can. If the rumors are true and WWE moves back to $70 PPVS, oh, yeah. that truly could be Vince's undoing. PPL are struggling everywhere. But a huge percentage of those are WWE's audience. I can easily afford it. And no. Um, Derek Hans uh, says I Super chat party What do you say? I can easily afford it I said the women's title match was Saturday's best match dork I see title match was match of the entire weekend Hail Joe and crew Oh man, dork took off before this donation even played My bad, Joe's Atmosphere That's a great name uh, Joe's Atmosphere, I'll let him know that you donated that later And uh, Derek uh, going back to Derek's donation, I can easily afford it in no effing way I'm buying it. So who is? Bye bye network too. Well, I think Peacock will still continue to carry the WWE product, like network wise, like in all that DVR stuff or whatever. Uh, but now they'll go to a pay per view model again, which that that is something we did not talk about that I wish that we had talked about when we had everybody here that I didn't think. I just had I totally forgot about that. That was one of the bullet points to bring up tonight, and uh, we're bringing it up now. But I wish I brought it up earlier. And it's like, wow, man, the idea of going back to pay per views and buying, paying for WWE for fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety dollars a show now, shit, bro. That is uh, that is something I did not want to have to go back to ever doing again. Now, the only thing I liked about pay per view was that it looks so much better. It's impossible for the WWE Network on Peacock to look good. It doesn't matter what you think. It looks nowhere near as good 
when you have a cable box and you order it on pay-per-view. The frame rate is beautiful. It's in full HD. When you order it on Xbox or PC or whatever, it does not look even close to as good as it looks on cable. Not close. And no matter what you think, it doesn't look anywhere near close. Um, there were times when my show was doing well here, when I was making over $100,000 a year, where I would, uh, I bought WrestleMania, I bought every pay-per-view on cable because it looks so good. I wanted it on cable and I could buy it. So I bought it on cable and give a fuck. I bought it on cable. Now I'm poor and I have no money and I, I would never buy it now. Absolutely no. And there were times when I was poor before that, before I was very successful for a second. When I, in 2013 and 14, when I was poor, I used to watch illegal streams. So in order to review the show, I'd be watching an illegal stream. And quite honestly, it was like shitty a lot of the times. And so, you know, you don't really get the full feel. Sometimes it felt like, but then, you know, once I started doing well on YouTube and at my full-time job, I had enough money. I was like, oh, fucking, I'll just throw it by the pay-per-view, 60 bucks, whatever it is, but buy the pay-per-view. And I know we buy AEW pay-per-views and that sucks too. I, I buy AEW pay-per-views most of the time. Although I think I I think I've done my last one. I'm gonna look for streams now, going forward because um, I think there was one AEW pay per view not that long ago where I think I like lost money. I left work early and lost money at work, leaving work early, and I think I made less money that night on donations. And then I AEW cost me more, and I was like, holy fuck! All right, I'm never doing this again. So yeah, illegal streams all the way now, guys. So especially if they do that. I just, just people can't do it. The economy is fucked. To buy a pay-per-view every two months on WWE or every month or two months or whatever they end up doing. I don't know. But that's what people are talking about them going back to that, to that situation. So guys, I really, really, really had a great time tonight and it started out kind of wacky and I had a great time. We were live for three hours and 40 minutes almost. Um, I got to tell you, man, that there was a solid viewership tonight, which is amazing. Uh, I'm going to be live almost every Tuesday night, I believe. I mean, we had 5,000 people stop in tonight at one point or another. And honestly, the, the viewership rate didn't dip a lot at all. You know, it went up and up and up and crescendoed here. And then we really stayed at this line and stayed above this water line here until now as I close the show out. So that is really really well done much appreciated thank you to all the guests and everybody that stopped by uh Rastafa was huge uh Luke Rojas was mega huge thanks to the dork knight for stopping by um and everybody who donated tonight man D Wells dropping the 205 bomb Allison dropping the 199 bomb uh and just everybody who donated all night long man we had a great time please hit the like button on your way out the algorithm at one point, didn't give a shit about the like button anymore, but the algorithm is back to loving the like button. So they go with ratio of viewers, ratio of amount watched, watch time, and then the likes help as well. So please uh, click that like button for 300 likes. And if you really want to go and do something to support the channel and also get tons of bonus podcasts and content from me, a lot of it very offensive material, uh, that you can't hear on YouTube, especially the Corrupted Podcast, then become a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show, and uh, we'd love to have you in the $25 producer spot or above. That would be amazing if you wanted to go to those lengths, and that would uh, super help the show. You can become a, a patron for a dollar a month if you want. I know you hear this shit from all kinds of people everywhere all over the place about their Patreons and whatever the fuck else, but we really need you over there. But not only that, you get a ton of stuff. It's not just you're leaving five bucks a month and that's it. There's thousands of podcasts. There's a there's a huge podcast with me and my mother, for Christ's sake. Me and my mother have like a one hour and a half podcast, which is, I think, really fun to listen to. People really liked it. Me and my wife have 17 episodes of our podcast. Uh, the Corrupted Podcast, there's over 200 episodes of that, which is, you can't even hear a lot of it on YouTube. Um, there's just so many shows, man. My wife and um, 
Monica did a show called Talk Spooky to Me. Uh, that's that's a series that's up on uh, my Patreon. Me and Jake DeMarco's Jake and Joe podcast. My note to selfs where I might record on my phone from time to time over the past seven years. Uh, me and Jesse's classic After Dark episodes. And uh, just so much more. Loaded on Patreon. Go check it out. There's so many shows that you've never heard that are not here on YouTube at all that are on Patreon that you can hear for five bucks a month or less. And, uh, yeah, that's you don't just get nothing. You get a shitload. My Patreon is full of crazy amounts of shit from the past, plus all my song parodies and everything else. It's all there. Um, thank you, guys. Thanks for backing me up. Please click that like button on the way out. Uh, I think I think HZ Jake, I think there is a good chance that you will see quite a bit more or a little bit more of UFC cross promotion uh, with WWE, yeah. I think they'll do some crossover type of stuff. And uh, almost much like how AEW kind of had that thing with Dan, uh, whatever his fucking name was. I don't even remember anymore. What the hell was he? Whatever his name was. You, you know what I'm talking about. That being said... I'll leave you with a picture of me and my wife from Monetize This a long time ago during a sex line call. Yay, look at us. All right, everybody. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thank you to D. Welsh for being the top dog, baby. D. Welsh unleashed tonight. And don't don't forget, guys, 5, 15, or 25, you can become a $25 producer of the Joe Cronin Show on Patreon. Go do it now. We'll be shouting you out tomorrow if you do it. Become a member of The Cronin Club by going to patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Get eight hours of bonus content a week not seen on YouTube. YouTube doesn't like the controversial stuff, but I am free to do what I want to do on Patreon. They won't be taking down these videos, so get the following for just five bucks a month. On Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show, whether it's on the app on your phone or your computer or whatever, over 2,000 hours of bonus content, controversial content you never heard on YouTube, like the Corrupted Podcast, my morning podcast, my podcast with my wife, my podcast with Jake and JB and everybody else over the years. There's hundreds of different shows on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And all we need is five, 15, or 25. signing up right now on patreon.com slash joe cronin show you can even sign up for a dollar but we really would like you to sign up under the 5 15 or 25 spot plus we have 50 dollars patrons and the insane 100 dollars a month patrons if you're 25 bucks you're a producer of the show <laughs>